Well, we cap off this beautiful day here in the desert with some great hoops action coming your way. That's right. We're back with men's Division I college basketball as two friends reunite on the hardwood. Steve Alford's Wolfpack pays a visit to Bright Strews 3-0 Lopes squad. Kate Longworth, welcome you here to the Lopes pregame show driven by Nissan coming at you live right now on Fox 10 Extra. And the Lopes came out hard, firing hard on all cylinders in November with a 3-0 start. Tonight looking to go 4-0 for the first time since the 2017-2018 season. But as we're getting used to during this COVID era, they've had a bit of a layoff. 10, game, 10 days without a game due to the fact that their last opponent came down with some illnesses. But we know someone who has been ready and raring to go from the start, and that is the rest of our broadcasting crew. So now I bring in Barry Butel, Scott Williams. I know you guys don't have to dust off the rust. You're ready to go. But let's take a look at this Lopes squad. How hard would it be to be coming out here ready to go, game action, you're finally seeing another opponent on the court, and then you have over a week off, and uh, you got to get out there fast tonight because you know Nevada is ready to bring it. No doubt, Kate. Yeah, they are. They had a 10 day break, of course, with the wonderful world of COVID uh, impacting the opponent that they were scheduled to uh, face. But man, they've been in the right hand lane and now it's time to, to step into the passing lane and put the pedal to the floor because you've got Nevada and Arizona State in back to back games. Yeah, two real sol solid squads coming in here um, and one thing I know about this uh, Bryce Drew team on our call we had with him yesterday is he's going to have some tricks that he has not shown in the first three games that he was able to get in that lab and to put into practice. You know the emphasis was on the speed of the game, getting these guys ready to play. I'm right on Dean Smith team. We played six on five to get ready for opponent. I'm sure Bryce Drew's implemented something like that in his squad. Well, one guy that uh, no doubt Lopes fans hope is ready. He's been ready the first three games, and that's Asborn Midgard. He is third in the nation now in rebounding. He has been phenomenal. I mean, this guy is really good at using his size and his strength and his power around the basket. Um, he has just been punishing teams down low, putting him in the torture chamber, so to speak, against smaller opponents. Now, he's going to have his work cut out for him tonight because he's going to face his first seven-footer. So look for him to try to get off early, maybe get the big fellow Washington in some trouble and continue his dominant ways in the inside. There you look at the numbers, 13 rebounds per game this season for Ashbourne Midgard. The Lopes have been out rebounding their opponents by 22 this season. One guy that'll be looked upon now with these back-to-back -back opponents tonight. It's Nevada Sunday afternoon. It's Arizona State here at GCO Arena. That's the guard play, and that's the sophomore, Javon Blackster Jr. Yeah, and he has really stepped up his game. He's really leading this team. He's uh, up in assists. He's doubled his numbers of assists, throwing it to the big guys, getting guys involved. He's looking to be more aggressive offensively, but he's got a tough matchup tonight in Sherfield. This guy has really elevated his game, much like Midgard, the teammates at Washington State a year ago. He has doubled his point production. I asked Coach Drew, who are you going to start in Sherfield? He says, I'm going to let Javon Blackshear get the first crack at him. 19 assists, leading the Lopes in assists is Javon Blackshear, and he's going to have a tall task here the next couple of games. Well, let's talk about these two head coaches. Bryce Drew from the great state of Indiana, and how about another guy on the Nevada Wolfpack sideline, and that's Steve Alford. Steve Alford is absolutely phenomenal in basketball. Coach Drew talked about doing the Alford workout when he yeah, was a right? kid trying to emulate what Alford was doing at Indiana. Won the national championship with Bobby Knight in 87. That was my national championship, Steve. I was supposed to get that one with North Carolina. But they were fantastic players. Always have their teams well prepared. It's going to be a great matchup to watch these guys you know, uh, lock X's and O's on that sideline tonight. You already mentioned Grant Sherfield, the uh, transfer from Wichita State. Yeah, the other transfer is on the Lopes, and that's Ashbourne Midgard. But here's this guard play, and he can nail it from anywhere. Yeah, he has been phenomenal. He really shoots the ball real well from the outside. He's got a great stroke from the three-point area as well. Hit a game winner against their game against Nebraska earlier in the season with a score tie 66, so he's not afraid of the big moment, doing a nice job leading his squad off to a nice start. He leads the team in scoring, and he can dish it out as well. 24 assists for Grant Sherfield. We'll keep our eyes on the sophomore guard. Kate, that sets it up here tonight as we continue to count down until tip-off. We'll send it back over to you.
Well, guys, we know uh, Coach Drew has been keeping this team conditioned in the gym, even though they haven't had game action. But Scott, how do they go out there tonight and just keep up with the speed of both Nevada tonight and, of course, ASU here on Sunday? Yeah, I believe Coach Drew will do a number of things. There's things you can do in practice to mix the speed of game up. When you have the starting group out there, you let them play six on five against the against the subs. They don't have to inbound the basketball. They just get it and go. You can practice getting back on defense, not allowed in a lot of fast break and transition buckets. Yeah, it's going to be up tempo. It's going to be nonstop. We'll see if they are up to the task, the Lopes, against the Wolfpack tonight. All right. Thank you, guys. Don't go too far away. You've got a game to call. It's going to be exciting because obviously some great players in place for both of these teams. But as uh, we've been talking, it's also really great to see Alford and Bryce Drew reuniting, but on opposite benches. We'll see how that all plays out. And we're going to get the game plan from Coach right after this. Barry sits down with Bryce Drew. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with the Lopes pregame show here on Fox 10 Extra. University, a Christian university, is one of the largest and fastest growing universities in the country. GCU offers 270 dynamic academic programs with modern apartment style living, classrooms, labs, restaurants, and more. Located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, GCU's vibrant community and expansive campus is ranked top 20 for best college campuses in America. My university integrates the free market system with a welcoming Christian worldview perspective into its academic programs and throughout campus life. So you can put your faith into action and help transform communities. GCU campus students received over $157 million in scholarships in 2020, and many students attend GCU for less than the cost of a state university. Visit gcu.edu slash my offer to see the scholarships you qualify for. Admissible high school seniors can schedule a free visit from anywhere in the country. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash my offer. It's a home heavy schedule for the Lopes to start off this season, both in November and December. A lot of games being played here at GCU Arena, and you're in luck because we're bringing them all to you on Fox 10 Extra, and conclude, including tonight's game against Nevada, Sunday's matchup with ASU, and we'll keep it going throughout the week. We'll be back here with you on the 15th as well. But for now, let's check in with Barry Butel, who was able to catch up with Coach Drew earlier today to get tonight's game plan. Thanks, Kate. Coach, uh, it's been a little while since we last chatted, about a 10-day break, albeit uh, COVID-related with an opponent. But uh, how do you feel the team's going to respond here tonight? It was good to get practice days. So yeah. uh, we saw some things we really needed to work on, uh, try to get better uh, before this tough uh, stretch of games. And um, hopefully practice is going to make us better tonight. We'll see transition defense is going to be very vital, you know, tonight in this game. And also our off offensive execution. we got to be able to take care of the ball, make sure we get it on, on spots of the floor that, that we needed to go to. Nevada here tonight and then uh, on Sunday afternoon, ASU. There's no doubt that... Uh, Boy, zero to 60, you're going to be ready. You have to put the, the pedal at the floor, right? The speed is going to be uh, pretty apparent on the floor. You know, it, it's definitely not a weekend for the weary. No, that's true. Um, we're going to be facing some really good teams, uh, specifically some really good guards, um, some really good guards. And both teams have, have bigs that can stretch the floor, really shoot the basketball well. So this is going to present a lot of challenges for us defensively. Um, we're going to see how we do it. We've uh, game plan for it. We'll see how we can execute it. And um, it'll be great for our guys to play against, you know, the caliber of players and the teams that we're facing this weekend. One guy that is definitely executed in the first three games is Ashbourne Midgard. Mm -hmm. He is uh, second in the nation in rebounding right now, albeit just three games in. A Ash, we call him Ash, yeah. so a little short for Asbjorn. You do a very good job uh, pronouncing it. A lot of people have a hard time, but, <laughs> but Ash has been tremendous. You know, his, his presence inside, he's been very efficient um, scoring the basketball, but we've been very pleased with his rebounding, um, especially on the defensive end. He's really rebounded the basketball well, which has allowed us to get out and fast break a little bit more. Alessandro Laver, he's the, the guy that's been leading the charge as well from a points per game average. He's over 16 points per game. You, you know, you almost take it for granted what he does offensively you, because yeah. he, he, he makes it look so easy. He, he hits threes. You know, he has a little float game. He can go down in the post. He has tremendous footwork. 
and you're almost more surprised when he, when he doesn't score um, because you just expect him to. But um, as a coach, you know, we, we value his, his skill on the offensive end, and it's something we have to do to utilize it to put him in positions where he can be successful on that offensive end. Oscar Freyer is somebody that Delopes fans are familiar with. He's kind of knocking the rust off just three games in, mm -hmm. a little bit of a break now, but he has tied that uh, 74 block mark for D1 record for, for GCU in regards to blocks overall. What are you seeing from Oscar early on? You know, we, we love Oscar. We love coaching Oscar. Um, he's just a tremendous young man. Again, he has such a charismatic personality that, that people are just attracted to. But I, I think one thing I've learned through my years of coaching and playing, when you sit out a year, it, it takes you time. You know, I don't care what level player you are, what level athlete you are. It takes time to just get used to being in games again and, and going through that grind of a season. And you see that a lot with transfers mm -hmm. um, and with players who, who have redshirted or sat out. It just takes a little time to catch that rhythm. So we feel Oscar uh, has started out well, but we feel like his best is yet to come. He'll continue to get better as this season progresses. With the Wolfpack tonight, uh, your bench, it's, it's been instrumental in the first three games. How do you see it playing out? And, and maybe talk a little bit about the bench support that you've received. Well, when we get to conference season, we have back-to-back -back games. And so I think depth is going to be you know very important. Critical, yeah. So in the non-conferences is a great time that that our bench can get some minutes um, get familiar with being on the court because we're going to need everybody especially when conference comes and you're playing back-to-back -back nights and and that's a lot of minutes you know in 48 hours so I've been very pleased you know tonight it won't be different you know we'll look to go to our bench and, and we'll play several players deep into our bench and hopefully get good productivity you're facing a guy that's got 600 victories in his career in some 30 years as a head coach. And if, uh, like you, are old enough like I am, I, I remember when he was playing for Bobby Knight and he was uh, Mr. Indiana basketball. That's Steve Alford. How, what are your thoughts about facing a, a, just a... a just a household name as far as college basketball is concerned. You know, growing up in Indiana, uh, Steve had a 60-minute workout tape um, that he did in college after playing with the USA team where they won a gold medal. And I think every kid in Indiana probably had that workout and, and did it, shooting over the broomstick and, you know, dribbling around the court with the chairs. And so, um, obviously, he's a household name, you know, not just in Indiana, but all around. And, and uh, we've become friends for the years. Our families, you know, Alford's a very, very big basketball family name oh, yeah. in Indiana. So uh, that's kind of how how this game came to be is, is us just knowing each other. Quick comment about the 4 and one Wolfpack and Alford's team coming in. You know, uh, very well coached. They're going to run a uh, very good offense. They execute really well. Uh, a very dynamic point guard who was teammates with Asbjorn last year at Wichita, Grant Shearfield. Um, he was committed to go to UCLA and then ended up going to Wichita, and now he's back, you know, with Steve at Nevada. So uh, he'll, be a, he'll be a load. Uh, he's very good off ball screens. He's very good in transition. All right, Coach. Thanks for your time and good luck. Thank you. All right, Head Coach Bryce Drew, we'll send it back over to you, Kate. Thank you very much, Barry. And as Coach said, this is not a weekend for the weary. Nevada tips off tonight in just moments. We're counting you down to tip off. And then ASU in the house on Sunday will be bringing you all the action here on Fox 10 Extra. It is a very limited capacity crowd here inside GCU Arena. But nevertheless, cutouts, cheerleaders, dance team, all safely ready to celebrate the Lopes getting back on the hardwood tonight. And we'll keep talking about it as the Lopes pregame show driven by Nissan continues. We'll be right back after this quick break. Anniversary of Operation Santa Claus. We've been feeding families and making kids happy for 20 years. 2020 has been tough for everyone. More kids, more families need your help this year. In celebration of 20 years, please donate $20 or bring donations to Sanderson Ford, Sanderson Lincoln, or the UPS store nearest you. And you might just win a new F-150 truck or a Lincoln Corsair. Donations benefit local charities only. For more info, go to givetothecause.com. She said she wasn't hungry. She only wanted a bite. But this isn't just a patty melt. This is a Whataburger patty melt, the all-time favorite, with two all-beef patties, Monterey Jack, grilled onions, and creamy pepper sauce. So one bite became two, and two became mine. Just a bite, huh? Good thing she's your other all-time favorite. Good thing there's the patty melt at Whataburger. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show driven by Nissan. It may look like a pack house here at GCU Arena with a lot of uh, famous folks in attendance, but a lot of those are cutouts. GCU safety is the highest priority to keep the basketball game going on the court. Limited court. Uh, 
crowd out there, but they're still finding ways to have fun cheering for the Slope squad. Meanwhile, GCU continues to do good for the community in partnership with Sanderson Ford and Openshaw Real Estate Group. They are proud to present the Operation Santa Claus and Build-A-Bear Holiday Drive. Lopes fans, you can build a bear at the Phoenix area Build-A-Bear Workshop December 5th. It's already started through December 24th and every bear made will be donated to Operation Santa Claus. For more information, you can visit gculopes.com slash build-a-bear. Build-a-bears are a big item in my household. They mean a lot to the kids, so it's really great, GCU, able to do this to help um, kids at home have a happier holiday season. And as you know, GCU, one of their top mission statements is always to give back to the community, and the need has never been so great than what we are seeing right now during this pandemic. But of course, with COVID-19, there's also been a lot of obstacles, challenges, restrictions, but nevertheless, GCU has found a way to still be the support system the surrounding community can count on. So what we're doing today is a project called Farmers to Families, and it, it, it resulted because of the pandemic. Today is the first day. Uh, we have our first, truck, uh, first truckload, and people went together, or worked uh, very, very fast to identify families that had need and uh, by 4.30 in the afternoon, all these boxes will probably be in the hands of families that need them. But it's part of a grander project, which is a relationship with the major retailers in the country, Home Depot and Target and Amazon and others. And a lot of them have produce, product, that goes out into the community and gets returned. And, and, and they can't resell that. And so a lot of that is being put to good use for people who need the help. It's a really special event to be able to um, just provide a basic necessity for people that may not necessarily have everything they need right now. But I think given the state of this year and that everything has felt kind of drabby and sad, <laughs> that it's added a lot of extra joy for all of us to be able to interact with others and kind of come together around a purpose to help others and to just be back into our community that we love to be a part of. I just think it's an awesome cause. Um, I was part of refugee ministry, so just getting to see that and just how they live, it's just a really, it's an awesome thing to be able to give food to children who need it. I definitely think we're all excited to be here. <laughs> it's, um, it's a good cause that we get to work for, so I think we all have a good attitude and just spreading positivity by doing what we're doing here. The students here love to serve and that's apparent everywhere you go. Um, I feel like this year students have been really eager to serve and go out and do things and do good things for the community and um, the Lopes Pride or the Purple Pride that we have at GCU really is about serving um, and so everybody here is uh, out here today to really uh, get that out there um, because there's been a little bit of a lack of it this year and so I think students are really excited to kind of get their hands dirty, roll up their uh, sleeves and get to work. Absolutely incredible how fast that came together, identifying the need, and within 24 hours, um, boxes of farmers to families food boxes were in people's hands, whether they showed up on bike, foot, or in a car, and GCU continuing to serve the community. And we're continuing to count down to tip off right here on the Loops, Lopes pregame show. We're getting you ready for a big matchup between GCU and Nevada in the house tonight. When we come back here on the Lopes pregame show, we're going to check in with Pastor Tim to see uh, the pulse around campus right now. We'll be right back. What you been to hell and back? There's not much left to fear. When the boogeyman goes to sleep at night, he checks under his bed for me. Have you ever wondered who Waldo's hiding from? Me. Not even the cougars of LA are enough to scare me. But if I get into an accident, I'm calling the boss. Sweet James. If you've been hurt, don't back down. Call Sweet James. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. 
Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show driven by Nissan. It's a limited capacity here inside GCU Arena. Health and safety coming first, but that doesn't mean there's not plenty to cheer about. I mean, after all, who's in the middle here? Well, you know, the Lopes trying to extend their lead to a 4-0 start if they can get the win tonight over the wolf wolf pack and we'll see how that all plays out tonight but still continuing action here on the pregame show kate longworth and i welcome in now pastor tim griffin who's also the vice president dean of students here on campus and uh you know just before you joined us here on set we were just watching the farmers to families food boxes mm -hmm. and just so much that city serve does here for gcu identifying needs in the community and making sure, making sure the community feels supported why are programs like this so important, especially right now? Well, there's clearly a need within yeah. the community for uh, agencies, organizations to step up and help people that are really struggling right now. And uh, CityServe was an opportunity for us to uh, mobilize our students and some of our staff to serve some of the needy um, agencies and families within our community. So uh, this is a really important time for us to step up and serve. And it's great because obviously um, the students on campus here, that's the future. These are the future leaders. How impressed have you been overall just with the pandemic, how the student body has responded, taken responsibility, mm -hmm. and then also, like you said, still identifying what's going on around them and giving back? I'm so thrilled with how the students um, have responded this year. They've worked really hard to uh, carry out all the protocols and abide by all the rules that we have in place and so we're just really grateful uh, with how they've done and so we're just thankful that uh, the students rallied like they did and have and uh, we're looking forward to a great semester where they'll respond to opportunities that come their way. And you oversee everything here from healthcare <laughs> to student life. Yeah. And I mean, we're all still every day, it seems like something's changing. That's what we're adapting to the fact that with yeah. COVID-19, you kind of are learning something every day. So how have Absolutely. you been handling that and how have the different departments, faculty, been handling things here on campus? Well, President Mueller started way back in March, uh, a weekly meeting. And so we've been ramping up the whole summer into the fall semester. So when students came back, in September, we were ready. And we had a lot of things in place, but you never know exactly what it's going to look like once until they get here. And so the press really came to our health center. Yeah. And our health center and the staff and many other departments rallied around them to make sure that we were taking care of students uh, in every way that we possibly could. So I would say our health center really had to change a lot of their protocols to be sure that we were serving students well during this time. Yeah, and a shout out to them over there. I know mm -hmm. Connie kind of- uh, Unbelievable. Yeah, overseeing everything. And then um, to the students, it's a lot to take on. So mm -hmm. how have you been trying to just support the students? Um, some of them may be spending more time at the university right now, not going home as much to their families, or the opposite, maybe at home, not seeing friends as much, doing online classes. Right. How have you just tried to unite the campus? Because I know that's always been something you take pride in. Yeah, it has been a change for us to not have all the big events and small group organizational type activities going on. But in spite of that, uh, we have uh, seen students rally around one another. We've seen staff kind of apply themselves in a different way as well as the faculty to be sure that students felt engaged and supported during a very different and challenging time. So I think everybody has really stepped up and tried to do their part this semester during a really strange time. Yeah, and I mean, right now we're taking some um, shots of the students inside the arena, and it's important for folks to understand at home, very limited capacity here, and if you do see students next to each other, they're kind of already potted up. They're either roommates or friends or family members, so that's what you're seeing inside there. But they also are still trying to uh, maintain that safe, healthy life, and things are still happening here on campus. You're still having chapels, mm -hmm. and I know you're having some important messages and those are being received, but I gotta tell you, there's also some fun in the messages you've been giving. I know this week, just the <laughs> holiday season, so not only are you talking about giving back to the community, we discussed that, but when you can't talk about the holidays without talking about Christmas movies, right? Yes, our home is no different than a lot of homes where we have a stack of Christmas movies <laughs> that we put out on a coffee table or a table somewhere, and we kinda go through those to see which one we're going to watch next. And so, yeah, we're all about Christmas movies during the Christmas holiday season and really enjoy this time of year. So sure. what's the breakdown? What are, what are some of your go-tos? Well, I'm an elf person. Well, I absolutely. Like elf elf is one of laugh. them. 
a Christmas vacation, Christmas with the cranks. Um, those are some of the some of our favorites. Yeah. yeah, I know Barry Battelle and I. We were talking about you know you could almost do a remake of It's a Wonderful Life right now and Absolutely. substitute instead of the bank collapse, uh, we could substitute in a pandemic. I think that right now more than ever you're kind of drawing to those. Uh, you know, holiday traditions to try and keep the spirit alive. We just saw the Grinch in there. So those are some fun things. And for you too, what's just your message to families, to folks at home, to fans watching as they go into this holiday season that may not look like holiday seasons of the past? Well, um, I sure hope that uh, families and individuals will maintain their hope for the future. This has been a very difficult time for all of us. And I think we're all uh, doing our best to keep our heads down and move forward. And I think as long as we have hope that things will be different and we keep trying to do the right thing so we can get through this time, I think we'll, uh, we'll do well. And sometimes it's hard to do that. Right. But I think as we uh, maintain uh, a high level of hope of what God can do in and through us, I think we'll see great success in spite of all the difficulties. Thank you, Pastor Tim. Some powerful words during this trying time. But like he said, you know, keep the hope and uh, stay together. And meanwhile, we'll also give you a lot of cheer about tonight as we continue the countdown here to the tip off here for the Lopes pregame show. We're closing in on action. Seven o'clock, Nevada and GC going head to head on the hardwood. We'll wrap things up here on the pregame show when we come back right after this. time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show, counting you down to tip off for just moments away from Nevada going head to head with GCU, who is 3-0 to open up the season, looking for their first 4-0 start since the 2017-2018 season. It may look a little different inside GCU Arena, but the spirit's still the same as the purple pregame party is getting underway. And as we've mentioned, uh, there is a limited capacity inside here, but that doesn't mean you can't still be a part of the fun. So make sure you have that Lope Nation app. It's the one-stop shop for all things GCU athletics, featuring the latest news, schedules, roster, stats, scores and content from all 21 of GCU sports programs. You can watch live streams of the game if you're not on Fox 10 Extra. If you're going to get in the car, go somewhere, you know, log on here, listen in the car safely, of course. And um, also there'll be some trivia so you can win a fan pack. So you want to make sure you're doing all of that this weekend as we carry you through with Lopes Fun. Kate Longworth here wrapping things up on the Lopes pregame show. We have Barry Butel and Scott Williams coming up with the call tonight, but it is a big weekend for GCU basketball. Not only Nevada in the house tonight, but a top 25 team, a neighboring team, pays a visit here on Sunday. That being, of course, Arizona State. And while you can't have the hospitality here inside GCU Arena, you, do, you are Miss Lopes Clubs members, so season ticket holders, GCU alums, you can still be a part of it all with the Lopes Club Watch Party. You can get more information on that by uh, by uh, logging on and also getting in touch with Isaac Chu at GCU. And uh, that's the Lopes Watch Party. So there are many ways, but right now we're keeping you locked into the action here on Fox 10 Extra. Grab a snack because we have a big game ahead of us coming your way. It's Nevada GCU. 20th anniversary of Operation Santa Claus. We've been feeding families and making kids happy for 20 years. 2020 has been tough for everyone, 
More kids, more families need your help this year. In celebration of 20 years, please donate $20 or bring donations to Sanderson Ford, Sanderson Lincoln, or the UPS store nearest you. And you might just win a new F-150 truck or a Lincoln Corsair. Donations benefit local charities only. For more info, go to GiveToTheClause.com. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Live from the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University and inside GCU Arena, where tonight the Lopes play host to the Nevada Wolfpack. Good evening and welcome to GCU Basketball. Alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams, I'm Barry Vitell. Kate Longworth will be along in just a moment. Well, you better pin your ears back, Scott, in the next two games. It's going to come at you fast and furious. It's the Wolfpack and the Sun Devils back-to-back. -back. Yeah, they better be ready for the speed of these teams. This is some high-powered uh, basketball, and I think the Lopes will be up for the challenge because they've had 10 days to prepare. The big man's been called upon early. We've been talking about Alessandro Labor, but this season he's got another twin tower, Asborn Midgard. Yeah, I call him the big nasty because he's got a little nasty ferocity to his game down low. He's been punishing teams around the paint, gobbling up rebounds. He's third in the nation in total rebounds at 12 a game. For the Wolfpack, we will look for 6-2 sophomore guard Grant Sherfield, their leading scorer. Sherfield is absolutely phenomenal. Down 10 at Nebraska on the road. Heath Kidd single-handedly brought them back, uh, hit the game-winning shot at the buzzer with just six seconds to go, a three from Stephon Curry range. Also leads the team with 24 assists. He has nine steals as well. The Wolfpack head coach, Steve Alford, the head coach for the Lopes is Bryce Drew looking to go 4-0 to start his debut season at the helm. Let's send it down to the public address announcer, Paul Denuser, with our opening prayer before we tip things off. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the beautiful GCU Arena for tonight's men's basketball matchup between the Wolfpack of the University of Nevada and your Grand Canyon University Antelopes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask once again that you all please rise if you are able. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with the word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Sydney Kincaid, a senior studying healthcare administration and a GCU cheerleader. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, before we do anything here tonight, we pause and we thank you, Lord. Thank you for the health of all the players playing today, Lord. I pray that this competition would be um, honoring to your name, Father, and I pray that you will just be with every fan and every official and every player here tonight. And I pray that everything that is done tonight will bring your name, honor, and glory. Amen. Thank you, Sydney. The University of Nevada, Nevada Wolfpack, 4-1 on the season, coming off an 86-64 win over William Jessup on Monday. Their head coach in his second season is Steve Alford, a record of 23-13 and 13 overall in those two seasons. 610 career victories in some 30 years as a head coach. Here's a starting five brought to you by Talking Stick Resort. Desmond Cambridge Jr., Grant Sherfield, Trey Coleman, 
Zane Meeks, and Warren Washington. Yeah, we're going to keep our eye on Cambridge Jr., a 6'4", 200-pound guard. He's averaging about 9.5 points per game, but where he is most deadly is with the ball in his hands on the offensive end. He is crafty with that basketball. Lopes are going to have to stay in front of him tonight. Keep two eyes and two bodies around him at all times. Let's introduce you to GCU. Come in 3 0 in the season after an 88 49 win against Mississippi Valley State on the 1st of December. Here is the Talking Stick Resort starting lineup for head coach Bryce Drew. Devon Blackshirt Jr., Mikey Dixon, Oscar Freyer, Alessandro Labor, and Ashbjorn Midgard. Well, we talked about Cambridge Jr. Mikey Dixon's going to get the start on him. 6 2 senior. He's going to have his hands full with Cambridge on the defensive end. What I want to see is if Mikey Dixon can go back at Cambridge Jr. on the offensive end and make it tough uh, for Cambridge Jr. to have to guard Dixon. He's only averaging about five points a game. He needs to up that tonight. Head coach Bryce Drew at the helm for the Lopes in his debut season. The assistant coaches Jamal Walker, Ed Schilling, and Casey Shaw. Director of player development is Ryan Lightfoot. Director of recruiting, A.C. Moikobu. Director of video operations is Peyton Prudhoe. Strength and conditioning coach is Jordan Jackson. And the athletic trainer is Jordy Hackett. Time for the keys to the game brought to you by Sanderson Ford. The best play in a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. Yeah, I had to go with the Nevada themed keys tonight. Lake Tahoe, so beautiful, you know, and, and like that Lake Tahoe, this offensive precision for the Lopes has been a thing of beauty as well. And they'll need to continue that tonight. Take care of that basketball, get high quality shots if they want to play with the Wolfpack. And then the El Dorado Casino. But don't gamble on defense against this Nevada team. Very crafty ball handlers like we talked about in Sheffield, uh, excuse me, Sherfield in Cambridge. Uh, and it's beginning to look alike like Christmas. And like Christmas, this team is beginning to take on the personality of their coach Bryce Drew, showing togetherness and preparedness. Oh, Lake Tahoe. Beautiful. You ever seen the water up there in Lake Tahoe? Oh, crystal clear. It's, it, it's so clear, right? Yep. I've never seen a lake that clear where you can like literally be in 40 feet of water and see the bottom. It's beautiful. Opening tip out of bounds. It'll be inbound by the Lopes. Associate head coach in Nevada, Craig Neal. The assistant coaches are Corey Barnett and Bill Dwayne. Blackshirt. Labor. Dixon. High by Cambridge Jr. Blackshear, near side. Oscar Freyer brings it baseline. Swarm there. Labor's got an open look, no. In the corner, Freyer for three. Bam! Well, I like that. It was the extra pass. Labor could have shot that little 14-footer, but he saw Freyer in his favorite spot down there in that pocket corner three ball, and he gave him the block, and he, and he knocked it down. That's what the Lopes are going to have to do. They're going to have to make the extra pass against this stingy Nevada defense. Washington looks for Sherfield. Hot right, by Blackshear. Far side, Coleman. Coleman down low. Washington drives baseline, kick back out. Cambridge Jr. way off the mark. Fell right into the hands, though, and the put back unsuccessful by Meeks. Wow. Yeah, they got a foul down <laughs> there on Labor. That's the toughest one for a big guy to rebound, that air ball that comes off the, off the basket like that. You're expecting it to hit the rim or the backboard or something, and when it comes off, it always handcuffs the inside guy. It seems like they're always an, a better offensive opportunity to get an offensive rebound. So a tough one for Labor to start there uh, with that air ball. Meeks at the line, misses the front end. 67% free throw shooter. Oh, got a fortuitous bounce. 
Yeah, he expected both of these teams to come out probably a little bit with some extra adrenaline. Some of these free throws, some of these early shots may not find the bottom. Labor leaves for Dixon, near side, Freyer. Drives towards the baseline, stops, pops. Oh, look at here, Oscar Freyer. He got another rhythm and a bounce to his game. You know, he sat out last year. He hasn't been spectacular for these first three games. He's been solid, but offensively now, maybe 10 days in the lab, has given him some extra confidence to come out here and be aggressive early. Fairfield eye tightly by Blackshire. Leaves for Washington. Washington hands the ball off. Coleman. Coleman quickly to Cambridge Jr. Back to Coleman underneath. Labor comes up and stops it. Yeah, I think that was Midgar. I think Midgar oh, got a big right. paw on that one and slaughtered it away. Long distance off the mark by Blackshear. Blackshear's not shot the three well this year. Only 25% surprise. He didn't look for a driving lane to the basket coming off of one of his big guys. Sherfield sure off the glass with his first bucket. So good with that ball off the balance. Got a nice little beat to his game, a little rhythm dribble. Just gets off the hip of Blackshear and finds his way to the bucket. Labor quickly to Freyer. Midgard leaves it back for Oscar. Oscar stops, pops. A little heavy, big rebound. Labor can't get his gloves on it. Sherfield up. Careful not to get a second foul. Quickly, Coleman off the mark. Loose ball, Labor, no, but it's Blackshear, he brings it up. These teams are running and gunning. Man. Labor, up over the top, Dixon. Far side, comes back out, the way. Now to Blackshear. Freyer quickly into Midgard. Right there by Washington, trying to work his way through, he's fouled. Well, the foot guard, by the, the footwork by the big seven foot, 270 pounder. Tight rope in the baseline, sneaks by his defender, puts it in reverse and draws the foul. That was a thing of beauty. I was saying this big guy's not a stiff. We noticed that right early on. He's got some mobility in and around the basket, and uh, he's not afraid to put the ball on the floor once or twice. Knocked that's, down his free throw. That, that's yeah, a rare needed, make. We needed to see that three for nine coming in. Yeah, and the team had been struggling the first half of games. Paul Coral <laughs> was uh, talking about how poorly these guys shoot in the free throws in the first half of basketball games. He's not able to get that one to go, but nice to see they're off to a good start making, making the first one. 6 3 early lead by GCU. Coleman. Down for Cambridge Junior. Quick turnaround and bucket. Got to watch him. That's that little double screen along the baseline. Run him off a couple bigs. And he, they got Meeks down there. Goes 6'9". And uh, maybe he acts about 6'7". And the 7-foot Washington. They can set some good screens. Oscar Freire's going to have to fight through those screens and close out on those shooters faster. Nine and at 6. Freire up top. Moves left. Oh, he lost the ball. Quickly up. Cambridge Junior. He's got Meeks up high. Bam! Oh, Meeks has got some good wheels. He can really run that floor. Really got out in transition, ran with his point guard, and he was rewarded at the rim. Labor. We'll pack up by two. Dixon, Freyer, up. Oh, stop there, Freyer. A little loose of the ball. Last two possessions. Got to be careful. Mikey Dixon steps back. That's off the mark. Midgard. Try to get his hands on it, but it'll be the Wolfpack ball. Well, they're crashing that offensive glass. They haven't been rewarded with one yet, but they're going hard to that glass. I, I think right now, you know, Frayer and Dixon, they're the two that are looking to be the most aggressive in shooting that basketball from the perimeter. I think they're going to have to start doing more of driving that ball inside against a really good defensive team that can rebound their own basket. They got to get something inside. It can't just be the bigs doing all the damage down low. Frey and Labor take a seat. McLaughlin and Sean Miller Moore check in. No. So offensive foul. That's one thing we've seen early uh, in this in this season. Teams not getting set when they're setting those side pick and rolls. Not coming to a stop. See, that's half, half of that's on the ball handler. He's not giving them the big a lot enough time to go over there and get his feet set before he's trying to come off of that action. McLaughlin. Blackshear. Bounce pass into midguard. Sherfield got a hand on it. The GCU ball. Timeout on the floor, 15-52, early on. Up tempo. Start to this one against Nevada. We'll be right back.
When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. GCU basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play at a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By Herb Jones, by your side. By Community Tire Pros, serving Arizona since 1945. And by Talking Stick Resort, play in style. Welcome back to GCU Arena. Getting ready for the holiday season. We'll send it over to Kate Longworth. That's not Kate, is it? Hi, Kate, over here. Well, it's a big treat for college basketball fans because, as we know, two family basketball names on the court tonight in these head coaches. Steve Alfred's family, obviously, a big basketball, as is the Drew family. And Bryce Drew said, growing up in Indiana, well, Steve Alfred was a household name. In fact, he said every kid growing up had the Alfred workout video it was an hour-long workout video in which he would jump over a broom dribble through chairs he said growing up you know he just had some aspirations to fill the big shoes and now what do you know sitting out on the same court together we know they're friends but tonight hoping their team gets the w yeah okay there's no doubt the relationship was instrumental in this matchup here tonight I hope he was jumping over a broom, though. I, I think I think he kind of got confused. It was shooting with a broomstick in your face. Someone holding a broom in your face as Alfred learned to concentrate and knock oh. down shots. Did you see the assist by the official? I, I missed that. That was awesome. Off the chest. Yeah, both these teams struggling a little right now from the field. Uh, GCU shooting just two for six in uh, the Wolfpack. 25 for, excuse me, shooting three for eight. Blackshire, heavy rebound. McLaughlin got a hand on it into mid guard. Tipped out of bounds by the Wolfpack. Good old school. Yeah, that, ooh, look at the pants. So 87. This is this is Alfred's senior year. Those pants are ridiculous. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious, that's so funny. Uh, but th <laughs> that team was loaded. I mean, if, if you remember, he he was the star player, but it was Keith Smart yes, who hit the jump hit shot the in the game final, winner. the game yep. winner, to get Alfred and Bobby Knight the national championship. That's right. It was a similar shot to the one Michael Jordan had hit a few years prior to that down at the, in Louisiana. Midgard with a turnaround bucket. That's his best move. Big left shoulder turn, right hand jump hook. In the middle to the right side of the floor. He's money. Meeks near side. Hands the ball off to Sherfield. Sherfield in the paint. Underhand. Off the mark. Sherfield thought he got fouled. He's looking at the official like, hey, I gotta shoot this with two hands. He broke my hand. Blackshear doesn't put it all. That's what I wanted to see out of Blackshear and Dixon. Anybody else coming off that bench, uh, driving that ball to the basket. He wasn't able to get that one to go, but that's where he's got to do his damage. He's been struggling from the field. Let's not be uh, coy about it. He's got to go ahead and get himself some fouls, get him some buckets and layups, or get himself to the free throw line to get his offensive game going. Robbie Robinson checks in, their leading rebounder. 6'8", junior forward for Meeks. Dima Zadora at the scorer's table to check in for the Lopes. Underneath, foul. Yeah, I think they got McLaughlin down there. A little too much body underneath, coming from that weak side. J.J. Himes goes to the line uh, where he's a 78% free throw shooter. Can we give credit to where credit is due? Because something that with Lopes we've seen do really well is pass big to big. That time Robinson found his buddy on the weak side. It, it was a little bit of a hard two-hand pass that he gave to him because it kind of came from above his head uh, down down to the waist area. But he really did a nice job corralling that basketball and going straight up with it strongly. So Nevada, much like GCU, able to pass big to big in the interior. Midgard out. He missed that free throw. We've seen yes, a lot of missed free throws early in this basketball game, haven't we? Uh, and, and that's just just not you know these two teams tonight. We've seen that all season long in college basketball. The door. He's struggling from the free throw line. I don't Early understand on. why because you know they work on it in practice. It's just got to be something about 
all of a sudden playing in front of a the pet band of cheerleaders, a couple of students that they're not used to, uh, and is throwing them off a little bit. Ten day break for the Lopes, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, there's certainly got to be some rust there. You hope there wouldn't be, but yeah. it's got to be a long distance shot. Oh, money for Blackshirt. Blackshirt, I'm just telling the guy he needs to drive it to the basket. He says, hey, put this in your mouth, yeah, Scott hey. Williams. He knocks it Zip down it. from 25, 23 feet off of that right wing. Robinson hands it off to Sherfield. That's what I like about Blackshirt. He's got box. He's got confidence. Look at him. Luke. He's like, I've been working on my shot. They'll fall eventually. Shooter's got to shoot. Turn around on a low percentage shot by Desmond Cambridge Jr. Sean Miller Moore brings it up. The Oregon State transfer. Dima Zador. Yeah, Miller Moore's got something on his thumb we haven't seen before. Once he got cracked in practice or done something to his thumb on his right hand. See if it impacts his shot. There it is. And it barely does it. <laughs> oh, no, it did not at all. Uh, two shots that were really nice. The one by Blackshirt Jr. Then that little kind of Oh, hokey pokey step. I don't know what, what he did to get into the lane there, but he was able to float that one up over the defense and get it down. Put your right foot in. <laughs> yeah, something like that, right? Then Robinson underneath. Oh, there's a bullet pass down low to KJ Himes. Wow. That's again high low passing, big to big. These guys are sharing that basketball well and doing some damage in and around the hoop. Blackshear near side and by Sherfield. Right by him, kicked it back out. Jaden Stone off the mark, pulled down by Kane Milling. Yeah, Jaden Stone, he had plenty of opportunity to do one, two dribbles to his right, come off of that, that shot. But look at this one one more time here. He got to go right, and I'm going back over here to my left, and I'm going to knock it in. That was a thing of beauty. Yeah, the defender didn't know which way he was going. But Jaden Stone on that last one, and he's got to take that basketball. And, and I know the three point shot's so attractive to these young players today. But if you're shooting 30% from out there, you can get a clean look where on a 60% shot, take the 60% shot early in the game so you can get a rhythm. McLaughlin called for the foul. Milling was driving. Blackshear took a seat. Chance, Mc, Chance McMillan in the game for the Lopes. Milling at the line. Yeah, I can guarantee you Blackshear Jr. is not going to be on that pine very long. Eh? He probably got a little of that you know, extra pump, driving it hard, having to play defense against guys that are a little faster than what he's, what he's seen in the first three basketball games. But Coach Drew knows that he is the, I guess, captain of this team offensively and defensively, and he's going to get him back out there just as quickly as he possibly can, probably right after the 12-minute break, under 12-minute break. How about Milling? Talking about free throws, he's 38% free for eight coming in. Hits both of them. <laughs> That's, go figure, right? Yeah. The guy, the worst, the worst guy probably in their conference can't, can't too. Blotham. Miller, Sean Miller Moore. To the perimeter. Blotham. Jaden Stone. Peeling away. Down low. Demons a door. Ball call. Tied at 13. Yeah, they got Himes pushing a little too much down low. 11.56 to go. Opening half. I'm personal injury attorney James Bergener. Accidents can happen. If something happens to you or your family, call me. My firm and I will take you by the hand and guide you through everything. You see, personal injuries are just that. They're personal. You're not a number. You're more than just a name. This is your life. At my firm, each case is professionally and personally tailored to you. So if you've been injured, I've got your back. Call me now for a free consultation. It's the 20th anniversary of Operation Santa Claus. We've been feeding families and making kids happy for 20 years. 2020 has been tough for everyone. More kids, more families need your help this year. In celebration of 20 years, please donate $20 or bring donations to Sanderson Ford, Sanderson Lincoln, or the UPS store nearest you. And you might just win a new F-150 truck or a Lincoln Corsair. Donations benefit local charities only. For more info, go to givetothecause.com. It's time. I'm excited. Uh, it'll be fun. Uh, we had good times in, in Wichita, and he's a great guy. Great player, too. Uh, crafty, strong point guard. Um, if I had to compare him to someone we know, it's probably like a Kyle Lowry kind of guy. Yeah. 
Ashbourne Midgar talking about his former teammate at Wichita State, Grant Shurfield, the Wolfpack's leading scorer. Wow, Kyle Lowry, that is strong. High breeze, praise indeed. Uh, I'm impressed, but I've liked this kid too. Uh, I, I think he's, he is not afraid of the big moment. I talked about a game against Nebraska where the game's the score tied 66-66. That only did he bring his team down, uh, back from 10 down in that basketball game in the second half. He cans a three from deep uh, to give him a 69-66 lead in the win. I think we got that one. We should play. Fantastic uh, look, shot. Yeah, look at this one more time. And they, they came from, from 10 down, tied it up. They're dribbling out the clock and basically a 1 4 flat. Give this guy the keys to the car. Yeah, he, he, he parked it in the garage for him. Wow. He looks super poised, too. Just calmly waiting patiently. Yeah, I mean, he knew what he was going to do. <laughs> yeah, I, I got no this doubt. ball. Everybody else, just get out of the way. I can handle it. Yep. Oh, nice inbound, huh? Just like it was scripted, Demon Zador. Yeah, that, that's the, I guess, personality of this Bryce Drew team that we're starting to see, that execution on baseline out-of-bounds plays. The mark by Himes, but he picked up the rebound, weaves his way around, and teardrops it in. Pass wow. McLaughlin. That was impressive by Himes. They didn't get that first one to go, but stayed with it and used a long step and a long left hand to get that softly off the glass. Four ties, a couple of lead changes, the biggest lead for GCU, 13 to 9. A tight game here early on at GCU Arena. James Stone! Oh, James Stone knocking down the three. He a couple over off that left side. That one he's able to measure the distance on, got on balance. Really can that one nicely. Millie, look left, bounce pass right, finds Yusinovich. Former Chaparral High stand down. Millie. That was McLaughlin yes. stepping in that driving lane, giving up his body for his mates down there, taking that charge. And it's Coach Alfred co coaching somebody up. He wanted that ball swung. That's one thing these coaches talk about is getting that ball from side to side, not once on a possession, but multiple times on a possession. Uh, more times you can swing it side to side on the basketball court, the higher your chances of getting a field goal uh, out of that possession go up. Alan Houston Ovich from uh, Phoenix Prep by way of Chaparral off the glass. Stone. Jaden Stone again. Ooh, this kid is coming and providing some fire off of that bench. Millian in front of the Wolves bench. Gets some support there by Robinson. Back to Robinson. Looking to drive. Pushes Labor down. Oh, I thought Labor had good possession. Position. Houston Ovich in the corner. Whistle called before that. Not sure what they got there. Maybe Frere on a hold down along yeah. that baseline. Fifteen foul on GCU. Baseline inbound, Sherfield. Coach Bryce Drew talking to the officials like, hey, how about the charge my big man took there? You're not going to give him any props for stepping in front. Sherfield looks to turn the corner. Nobody. Mid guard. Freyer knocks it away. Out of bounds. Great hustle there. Great D. You know, the, the, the original defense in the closeout was bad by Freyer. But look, he doesn't give up on it. He stays in the play, comes over and blocks a shot. That's what they, that's why Coach Drew loves Oscar Freyer. He says he's a, he's a great person and a dream to coach because he just doesn't quit. If he makes a mistake or an error, he tries his darndest to make up for it. A lot of guys will hang their heads on a possession. He just keeps playing and fighting through it. Wolves have made five of their last six shots. Wolf pack. Down by five. It's turnover. Yeah. Is that Jaden Stone? This kid's doing a little bit of everything out there. Poked that ball away. And then what I love, doesn't try to stab at it. After he pokes it away, watch him. He dies for this ball. Like, I want it more than anybody else. First to the floor, Coach Smith at North Carolina was the master of keeping a stat of who was the first to get on the floor when the ball was in a, a loose ball situation like that. Little pride on the line. He wants to be the standout from Sunrise Christian Academy. He attended it, as did Grant Sherfield from the arc. Off the mark, Midgard's underneath. 
Pulled down by Warren Washington. Yeah, Washington used his leg. He got Mitch Midgard up underneath the basket where only he could get it. In the corner, Millian's got some time. Off the rim. And back in, Freyer again, big hustle. Blackshear, yep, yeah, you're right. Back in the game pretty quickly. Weaved around Labor. Labor puts it on the floor. Back to Blackshear. Millian on him. Leaves for Labor. He looks right. Now he cuts back in. Twist goes to his right. Step back. Not there, but Midgard is. Well, the shot was blocked. Or, or Labor got fouled, but it found its way right to Midgard. And he's got great hand-eye coordination. He snatched it out of the air and put it right up off the glass. Bucket there by Sherfield. Well, that's where those guys are so good. Cambridge and Sherfield so good with that basketball off the bounce. Blackshear puts it on. Floater off the glass! Now he's driving that ball in here. All of a sudden, it went from nobody being able to score to being fast and furious again. Sherfield steps back a bit, looks to grab up, moves right, off the glass, and in. He goes by Labor. Oh, you can see what the theme is tonight for these teams. They, 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 they could turn the 30-second shot clock off. They don't need that. Both these teams are shooting it early and often. Off the rim. Wolf pack of inbound. Look at this one more time. There's a nice drive. He gets cut off. He likes that spin move. He gets double teamed, and someone got a piece of it. But Midgard always got a nose for the basketball. <laughs> and he, look at the other two bigs that normally come in for those guys cheering them on. And then Black's here. Right back down that right lane. So good at getting it up over the help side defense and kissing it off the glass. Meeks back in for the Wolfpack. Cambridge Jr. long distance. There was a lead by the Lopes to two. Labor leaves for Freyer. Freyer cuts baseline. Back out. Labor. Labor's got time for a three. Bam! Oh, that's good basketball right there, and I like that. It's unselfish basketball. It's team basketball. Find the open guy, deliver a strike to him, put it right in his shooting basket, and let him go up in there and knock it down. I love that. Washington, that's right, Sherfield. Moves in, kicked out, makes, back out, Cambridge Jr., good. Oh, Cambridge is starting to heat up. That's what I was afraid of. Sherfield's going to get his points, but you can't let that second score, a Cambridge junior guy averages nine and a half. You don't want to see him go for 16. Well, Pack puts it back just two. Point lead now for GCU. 7.05 to go, opening half. Blackshear directing the troops. Wants Freyer to come over. Leaves it for Labor. Up over the top, finds Midgard. He's fouled, 6.55 to go. That lead again, just two by GCU on what we had talked about off the top of the show. Back-to-back -back games tonight against Nevada and then Sunday afternoon against Arizona State. And uh, we're seeing uh, an up-tempo play and we're seeing a bench that is really active. We're seeing a lot of guys being rotated in. Well, I think one thing that uh, has been really good for this GCU team and maybe some of the soft teams that they've played is they've been able to play 14 and 15 guys and they've been able to find 12 and 13 guys that can score off of that bench. So Coach Drew has no hesitation whatsoever of putting a guy like a Jaden Stone in for a black shear, coming back with Miller Moore or McLaughlin or Zador. Yep. And the list goes on. He's got 10 guys he can plug in in big time games and big time moments, and they produce. Yeah, and you're talking about it. Yeah, producing. Jaden Stone comes in and hits back to back buckets. I, I love this one. I love this one right here because that's just a guy working hard out there saying, I, I got to get inside that painted area, get the ball below the free throw line and, de and deliver. And then I love this one right here because that's. Wonderful execution coming out of a timeout. They get that high handoff right out the pocket, and then just a swing over to the young guy on the late on the left side. And uh, Jaden Stone knocks one down from the outside. Then when the defense comes out on a little tighter, he puts it in drive and takes it right to the bucket. For every three-point shot that GCU makes, Copper State Credit Union will make a donation to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship. For more information, please go to giving.gcu.edu. Gary Buttel, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth from GCU Arena. Tonight it's the Wolf Pack, the 4 and 1 Wolf Pack. And Sunday afternoon, Kate will have the pregame show at 1.30, tip off 2 p.m. as the Sun Devils from Arizona State come in, a record of 3 and 2.
tough loss the last night to San Diego State, so no doubt they'll be fired up. <laughs> they'll be more than fired Sunday up. They'll afternoon. be hot. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't. And the score is not indicative of how they got beat. They got smacked in the mouth on their own home floor. And you know, a Bobby Hurley team is not <laughs> going to respond. Uh, they, they're going to have some tough practices in the next couple days. They'll be ready for GCU for sure. Bobby Hurley's non-conference mark is pretty outstanding. Can't imagine he won't have his team ready here at GC Arena Sunday afternoon. We hope that you join us. You see what the ASU football team was doing to U of A today? That's, that's, uh, they put the old smack down on him. It was like 42 to nothing in the first half. Yikes. Moving the ball around quickly. Dix Blackshire rather steps back at the shot clock as it was expiring. The ball knocked out of bounds by Mikey Dixon. Yeah, Mikey Dixon went in there and got the offensive yeah. rebound, but he was in too much of a rush to get it back up, uh, and it just squirted out of his hands. Sean Miller Moore makes his way over to the scorer's table for the Lopes. Cambridge Jr. Almost lost the handle. Back to Meeks. Back to Cambridge Jr. Good. Well, either they know something I don't know, but I don't know why you would close out on Meeks from three and leave Cambridge Jr. open. He's already canned a couple threes. But stunt at Meeks and make him show you he can beat you from the outside and then, and then, and then stay with Cambridge Jr. because he's knocked down four threes already tonight. Four of six. Labor to Midgard. Uh, beyond the arc. Freyer up over the top. Beautiful pass. Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Labor can't believe he missed Man. the first one. He had the guy that jumped so high, I think he went up over Labor's back and uh, across his head. Then he went back up with it and felt he got he got hit. Now, I don't understand why they haven't reset the shot clock. I thought that ball hit the bottom of the rim. Take a look at it one more time. That ball definitely hits oh, the rim, yet they're leaving six seconds on the shot clock. Somebody needs to tell them they need to re uh, reset the, the shot clock on that. They're not going to catch it. they got a short shot clock to work with here. Labor five, four, turns left, right, puts it up. Off the rim. Fighting his way gets the foul. Meeks call. That was just hard hand lunch barrel yep. basketball. Wasn't real pretty, uh, but it was effective. And you got to give him a lot of credit because he was a dirt worker on that possession. He wanted it the first time and couldn't get it. And then after the out of bounds play, he went right back to him again. Uh, and he was determined to get to that bucket. Hey, got Thunder joining us over here in the studio. Barry, check this yeah. out. Hey, hey Thunder. Yep. Oh, okay. Do the uh, elbow crack. I got to do crack. the elbow yep. bump with Thunder. Yep. I tried to give him a, 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 a fist bump, but no, he wasn't no, He no, wasn't going there. That. None of that. We got the COVID uh, protocol down yep. pat. Favor. Red hot from the line. Ten of eleven. Sherfield floater up top for Warren Washington. Oh, the whole high handoff. That's a set play. That's one big coming up high, setting the screen. You get the other big to have to help, and and then Washington just comes right off their back to the rim and. Sherfield knows to throw it up there about 11 feet in the air. Picked off by Sherfield. Off the glass with a kiss. Yeah, those turnovers are kill you. Coach Bryce Drew won't like that. He gets a quick timeout. Shilly not happy. Coach Shilly not happy with Mikey Dixon. We'll pack up by three. Look at Sherfield just turns a corner and then Midgard's got to come off of his guy. And Washington just says, thank you, little guy. I'll take those two. Slams at home. Hey, for a seven footer, he's only about 220 pounds. But he and he but he plays much bigger around the basket with his length. That time he does it on the offensive end. So little time to regroup for GCU. Alessandro Labors climbing the scoring list for GCU all time. Bayard Forrest at the top. Doug Baker inching ever so close. Yeah, still only eight points to go. He'll get that tonight the way he's playing. He's being aggressive, being a beast down down low. Baker, part of a long lineage of Bakers here at GCU. Keith Baker, his son, is a longtime athletic director here at Grand Canyon University. That family poured their heart and soul into this university. 
Got to love those vintage shots, right? Those those photos of the. I was trying not to comment. On, I was trying not to comment Short on shorts. those. Yeah, those are all the scripted photo preseason photos. Yeah. They, they cracked me up. Those old football photos too, with the extended arm. Yeah, the short shorts. Yeah. I, I got boxer briefs longer than those game wow. shorts that they were wearing. <laughs> they that were wearing vision. there. You didn't need that visual. <laughs> five ties and five lead changes in this game between the Wolf Pack and the Lopes. Oh, offensive foul on Laver. I didn't see that. Maybe a flop. But Laver thought he went down there and got position. But a lot of turnovers here in this last couple minutes for the Lopes and have them in a three-point hole. We'll go down here again and see if they get some position there. And elbow up. He, first of all, he wasn't set. Maybe they got him for the elbow, but that elbow wouldn't have knocked many people over. Sherfield, sure long distance, old the Wolfpack are awake. Yeah, they certainly are. I, I thought the Lopes would do a little bit better job of closing out on those three-point shooters. They've been, they've been able to find the range from the outside now. It was five for ten from behind the arc. Stone, that's knocked out. 7-0 run for the Wolfpack. Take a look at the ankle, oh, that oh. right ankle of Stone. Oh, boy. I'm surprised they, they got lucky with that. That's generally a travel situation. That ball gets picked up and then goes down to the floor. That's a double dribble, the old travel, but the officials didn't catch him. He is, uh, he's hobbling too. They're gonna get Freyer in for him. He's definitely, uh, that ankle. Yeah, he's injured. Yep. Look, he can't even move. Yeah. Somebody needs to get a timeout. They're yeah. playing four on five. Blackshear, he hits it. That'll put him. Well, it's just, it's no problem. No. <laughs> I'll just work off this left side over here, but nobody's oh, back in look defense. Out. Better be ready. KJ Hines puts it home. Yeah, they gotta get a, they gotta get an injury timeout. They got an injured player out there on the floor. They can the officials can call a timeout and get an uh, injured player off the floor. I'm surprised they didn't stop it after the made bucket by Blackshear, to tell you quite honestly. After that basket, the technical foul has been assessed against number 42. Oh, a little extra selly on that one. Technical foul. I KJ don't, Hines. don't know what, what it's for. Let's see. Okay, after the Hang dunk, on. the dunk no. is fine. Oh. And then oh. running back down the floor. And he, he looked oh. kind of back over his shoulder, but that, that, that was that was a little, little too much by yeah. the officials. Six-point lead by the Wolfpack. Time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. We can stand together by standing far apart. Stay six feet apart from other people. Wear your mask when you go out. Wash your hands often. If you feel sick, stay home. Be respectful of others. The choices you make are critical. By protecting yourself, it helps protect all of us. Your actions can save lives. What we do now will shape our future. Stay, Stay safe. safe. Just under four to go in the first half. Right now, GCU trailing Nevada at 31 to 37. Meanwhile, we take a look at our USAA athletic calendar. Tomorrow, Molly Miller from the basketball team is at Southern Utah. Also, men and women swimming diving teams in action. And Sunday, we'll be right back here with you as GCU men's basketball team goes head to head with ASU. And uh, we know Sun Devil, well, they'll be looking their wounds coming out after that rough loss to San Diego State last night. And still coming up in today's game, I will be checking in with Coach Drew at halftime uh, to get his assessment on how things have been going. Plus, we'll check in with GCU Student Life to see how they are doing their part to give back to the community during these tough COVID times. That's all coming up at halftime, guys. Thanks, Dave. We look forward to that. Alessandro Labor at the line. Funny to see the seven footer on your team go down and shoot the technical free throws at the at the other end. It's a big blow. I mean, you get a two point shot and then you got to give two free throws back the other way. And fortunately, Labor, who's been so good from the line, 
not able to get that first one to go. I wonder if not having other players on the free throw line yeah. throws players off. They never let me shoot technical fouls. That's so all. I wouldn't know. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I never had a high enough field goal a free How throw percentage happen? to do that. Although one year in the NBA, I did shoot 87%. So I got better as I got older. But How many did you shoot? Four? No, free throws? Yeah. Oh, no, I, you 87%. Know, I mean. no, 100 and something. <laughs> more, more, more. <laughs> oh, Freyer, they tried to give them a rally oop. Timeout. GCU labor underneath. Yeah, they, they drew up a play to throw an alley oop to yeah. Oscar Frere coming out of that timeout. A little risky down by, you know, a five point disadvantage. And I think that's when you tell labor only throw it if it's wide open. And I think he maybe tried to get a little too aggressive because although there was a slight advantage, he was not wide open. Now they draw something up probably a little safer <laughs> this time coming out to execute the baseline out of bounds play. So we'll see what. Respective coaches draw up. As we look at the huddle of GCU, Coach Drew. As you look at the all-time NCAA victories by family, Drew at number two. The Knight family at number five. Yeah. Sutton's yeah. number uh, tied for two. Yeah, I, I, I think the Drew family, if I'm not correct, not wrong, I think that his brother Scott, Bryce's brother Scott, got a real win for Baylor that might have gave them 1174. Okay. So we'll have to we'll have to check on that one just to make sure. But um, oh, I, I asked on the on the media call that question to Coach Drew, and he said his, his dad gets credit for over 600 of those 1100. <laughs> him and his brother got some oh, work to do. Look at that! They drew that up nice. Blackshire. Okay, I'm impressed. Yep. Uh, and, and just a short season already this. Oh, wait a minute. Here it is, the zone defense. Here we go. GCU's first zone defense of the season. Now, he, Coach Drew was worried about them being able to attack on the inside against them from the middle. We'll see how they, they stand up. Oh, up over the top, Kane Milling for the three. Yeah. Came in one of seven from the arc coming into the game. Yeah, he's concerned about his team's length to be able to expand out of that impacted zone to be able to close out on shooters. They knocked one down. I wonder if Coach Drew will get out of that zone the rest of the game. Five-point Wolfpack lead, Labor. Fouled underneath by Robbie Robinson. Yeah, Robinson got a little bit too much body underneath on that one, but that's one Labor's a little bit mad on himself because it wasn't that much contact in the upper part of his body would have thrown off his shot. He just didn't get the elevation that he thought he was going to get. So instead of shooting it into the square, he ended up shooting it back into off the board into the into the rim area. That'll come, you know, mid-season. Come um, See? Whack, whack play, he'll knock that down. See, you had to have people on the line. You had to have other people on. You're right. Yeah, well, there's something about there. All of a sudden, they just stand out there and there's nobody there. Although you do it practice nice. like that, but you're not used to doing it in the game. No. There we go. We got ourselves a ball game here. They have 40 37 here with just under three to play. I thought the score would be a little lower than this in the first half. But these teams are really knocking down three point shots and driving the ball in the basket aggressively. Sure, field beyond the arc, off the mark, pulled down by Sean Miller Moore, leaves for Blackshire. Is it just me or does Miller Moore look like he does a good job on the blast? Yeah. To me, it looks yep. like he does a good job. Oh, look at Blackshire, huh? That was a great, great half. Great drag screen by the bit. 12 points for Blackshire. Big left hand there by Warren Washington. Washington. That's what they were concerned about. Transition defense. These teams are playing much faster than the Mississippi Valley States and the Grambling. Got to get back on D. Try double clutch there. Yeah. Look at the black shirt off this. I mean, he knocks this one down. Nice little drag screen there by Laver and gets to his favorite spot there, that free throw line, corner of the key area there on the top. But you got to get back on defense. Laver's got to see that ball go through the rim and, and put it in fourth gear and try to get back to that paint area and start walling up and not let Robinson and some of the other bigs get good low post position. Three Wolfpack turnover, six by GCU here in the opening half. Sherfield off the glass, does it go? McLaughlin pulls it down. And McLaughlin did a nice job helping out weak side defense and challenging the shot without fouling. Away from the ball. What they get? Free throws. Robinson. Yes, he did. Robinson on labor. Oh, okay. I thought it was on the ball. I thought maybe they had Cambridge on that one, but you're right. Pushing Labor down low, and that's just as, about as good as giving him two points the way he shoots free throws. Great, 
Okay, I'm not saying anything more about <laughs> Labor's free throw shooting ability the rest of the game. Second on Robinson. Field. Near side, cutting in, down underneath. Henry, Henry looking to move. Up over the top and it drops. Good work by DeAndre Henry from Phoenix Prep and the Phoenix, Arizona native. I don't know if he even saw the basket. I, I mean, think I, he did. I think because he's played enough times, he knows where it's at. But <laughs> Labor does such a good job of walling up on him with his size and his strength. He couldn't move. Labor off his spot, but he somehow forced it up and got it in the basket. First of all, they got to do a better job you know, keeping the ball in the middle. But look at Labor. He doesn't bite into the pump fakes. He stays right there, and he just kind of throws that one up with a right-handed push shot and knocks it down. That's kind of like when I was getting older as a player. I couldn't see the hoop rim as good anymore when I had to do things in live, in live motion. Uh, I just just have to shoot so many shots from the same spot. I knew kind of muscle memory, muscle memory yeah. where I needed to put the ball to get it in the basket uh, as my vision started getting poor from outside, from shooting the balls outside. That's what these guys do. I mean, the guy shot that shot 10,000 times in his yeah. lifetime. Well, we hear that from really all the greats, right? The, the Michael Jordans, the Wayne Gretzkys. Uh, they would just take shot after shot after shot after shot for and this it would be second nature. The muscle memory would will the, the shot in. You're absolutely right. Blackshear, Lawton, Freyer. Ten on the shot clock. Nine. That's top of the key. Stops. Pops. Good, Oscar Freyer. Yeah, and, and get the McLaughlin will not get an assist on that, but that was a great screen. He gets a nice wide base. Gave him a nice clean look from 16 feet, just because he knows basic fundamental basketball and how to set a good streak. Under a minute to go. Lead is three by the Wolfpack. Sherfield floater up top. Doesn't go off the mark. Looking to drive it home was Washington. Yeah, they like that high handoff to Washington. He just threw the ball a little faster than Washington could get to it and hit the rim before the backboard before Washington could catch up with it. Bounce past Dean is a door. Looking to move on Henry. Bounce underneath McLaughlin off the glass. Seema's a door. Wow. What a nice little bounce pass. Just a pretty little pass to his big down there. McLaughlin able to go reverse, like you said, and then find it off the glass. So Lopes have cl closed that distance, which once was a six point disadvantage. He got it down here to one. Awesome opening half for that final shot. 10 on the clock, 8 on the shot clock. Sherfield, he did it against Nebraska. Oh, Oscar Frere played such good defense for 30 seconds, but they gave up that reach with two seconds to go. Going to sit him to the line for the one and one. Got to play composed. Yeah, it was just that foul that put him into the penalty situation, too. That's the, that's the real stinging part of it. You hadn't put him in the one and one the entire half. Make him make an outside shot. Knocking that rust off is Oscar Freire, and then missed the shot. Have to put it up. I don't think he did. I don't think he got it off the time. No. Nope. Hey, it's a tough one. Hey, Lopes lost, lost a little momentum, but got it back at the end of the final two minutes there to cut the lead to one at the break. I love this one by Zeman. Uh, the door right here. He just, he just dropped that thing down between two defenders. So the lead is just one for Nevada, coming in four and one to take on the Lopes this evening. Send it down momentarily to Kate Longworth with the head coach Bryce Drew. As uh, he's got to be somewhat pleased, albeit with that late foul by Freyer. Kate? All right, thank you guys. A one point lead right now at the half. And uh, Coach Drew, I turn to you now and just check in. How did you feel your team responded after that 10 day layoff to come out and uh, attack the Wolfpack in this first half? Well, you know, we made shots early, and that gave us some confidence on the offensive end. You know, defensively, 44 points is way too much to give up. Uh, we can't give up that many points and, and survive two halves. So we're going to have to defend much better um, coming out of this half. But 
you know, credit Nevada. You know, their, their guards made a lot of tough shots. Um, they're making tough shots, and we just got to play better defense. So that'll be our talk at half. Yeah, kind of extending that. How do you go out there and kind of defend the three and take away those shots from beyond the arc right now that hit six? You know, uh, they're really streaky shooters. Um, Cambridge hasn't been shooting well. We know he's capable. Once you get a good shooter that's a rhythm guy, he gets his first one or two down. You know, it's going to be a long half. We got to get him out of rhythm to start the second half. All right, thank you so much, Coach Drew, for your time. Uh, we'll see more action from the Lopes here in the second half. But for now, we're going to take a quick break right now. 44-43 here at GC Arena. It's a close one, and we've got plenty to talk about during this halftime. So uh, take that bath and break, grab a quick snack, and we'll be back to discuss this first half and also some of the happenings around here at GC. One more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes. While you explore our country, let Community Tire Pros be part of your journey. We're here to give everyone something to look forward to. Message us or schedule an appointment online at Community Tire Pros today. Tire Pros, we're here for you. Grand Canyon University, a Christian university, is one of the largest and fastest growing universities in the country. GCU offers 270 dynamic academic programs with modern apartment style living, classrooms, labs, restaurants, and more. Located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, GCU's vibrant community and expansive campus is ranked top 20 for best college campuses in America. My university integrates the free market system with a welcoming Christian worldview perspective into its academic programs and throughout campus life. So you can put your faith into action and help transform communities. GCU campus students received over 100 <laughs> Their last game was on December 1st, but you wouldn't know it as the Lokes come out. Dust off the rust and they are ready to play against a top division one opponent. Right now it is a one point game here at GCU Arena between the Lopes and Nevada Wolfpack. Kate Longworth welcome you in here to the Lopes Halftime Show. Coming at you from GCU Arena. We're going to be talking a lot about basketball, but also focusing on what GCU is all about. And one of the mission statements from the beginning has been giving back to the community. And we all know there's no greater need than right now during this pandemic. However, with COVID-19, there also comes some challenges, restrictions. But GCU students have not let them slow them down from finding a way to be the support system that the community needs right now. So what we're doing today is a project called Farmers to Families. And it, it, it resulted because of the pandemic. Today is the first day. Uh, we have our first, truck, our first truckload and people went together or worked uh, very, very fast to identify families that had need. And uh, by 4.30 in the afternoon, all these boxes will probably be in the hands of families that need them. But it's part of a grander project, which is a relationship with the major retailers in the country. Home Depot and Target and Amazon and others. And a lot of them have produce, product that goes out into the community and gets returned. And, and, and they can't resell that. And so a lot of that is being put to good use for people who need the help. It's a really special event to be able to um, just provide a basic necessity for people that may not necessarily have everything they need right now. But I think given the state of this year and that everything has felt kind of drabby and sad, <laughs> that it's added a lot of extra joy for all of us to be able to interact with others and kind of come together around a purpose to help others and to just be back into our community that we love to be a part of. I just think it's an awesome cause. Um, I was part of refugee ministry, so just getting to see that and just how they live, it's just a really, it's an awesome thing to be able to give food to children who need it. I definitely think we're all excited to be here. <laughs> it's, um, it's a good cause that we get to work for, so I think we all have a good attitude and we're just spreading positivity by doing what we're doing here. 
The students here love to serve and that's apparent everywhere you go. Um, I feel like this year students have been really eager to serve and go out and do things and do good things for the community and um, the Lopes pride or the purple pride that we have at GCU really is about serving um, and so everybody here is uh, out here today to really uh, get that out there um, because there's been a little bit of a lack of it this year and so I think students are really excited to kind of get their hands dirty, roll up their uh, sleeves and get to work. Absolutely incredible what GCU students were able to do in a short amount of time for a lot of people here. They, whether they were walking up on foot, riding their bicycles, pulling up in cars, farmers to families, getting the food boxes in people's hands for those in need. All right, well, we have a basketball game here on our hands. When we come back, Barry and Scott break down stats, highlights, and much more from this first half. 44 43 is the score right now between the Wolfpack and Lopes. We'll be back to talk more. University, a Christian university, is one of the largest and fastest growing universities in the country. GCU offers 270 dynamic academic programs with modern apartment style living, classrooms, labs, restaurants, and more. Located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, GCU's vibrant community and expansive campus is ranked top 20 for best college campuses in America. My university integrates the free market system with a welcoming Christian worldview perspective into its academic programs and throughout campus life. So you can put your faith into action and help transform communities. GCU campus students received over $157 million in scholarships in 2020, and many students attend GCU for less than the cost of a state university. Visit gcu.edu slash my offer to see the scholarships you qualify for. Admissible high school seniors can schedule a free visit from anywhere in the country. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash my offer. When you have the urge to play outside, Tire Pros wants to get you there. Offering convenience, selection, and our national roadside assist. Message us or schedule an appointment online at Community Tire Pros today. Tire Pros, we're here for you. Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing gifts to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions gift collection. Nevada up by one over GCU. We are at the half. Barry Butel alongside Scott Williams. So glad you could join us here this evening, and we encourage you to join us again Sunday afternoon at 1.30 when the Sun Devils from Arizona State come to GCU Arena, but a great opening half year. We talked about it off the top where the tempo was going to be fast and furious, and we <laughs> saw that. Nevada, though, fast break points are up 6-0, and they're 13-2 in the turnover uh, points off of turnovers as well. They seem to be kind of holding the edge there in that cat in those categories. Yeah, and, and points in the paint. That's yeah. one of the categories that GCU has dominated through three games. They're actually at a disadvantage right now, 20-14 to 14 in the bench. 14 points off of that Nevada bench, just 11 for the Lope. So the, they're going to have to do a better job of getting a handle on some of those guys coming off that Wolfpack bench. And uh, close down those three-point shooters. They, they, they're 6 of 12 for behind the arc. Lopes are 5 or 10, not doing bad. But uh, they got to get eliminate some of those uh, three-point shooters by, uh, by the backcourt there. The, the backcourt's killing them. 23 points for Cambridge and Sherfield. What about Javon Blackshear? He's got two uh, three-point shots, and he uh, has got 12 points overall in the opening half. Well, we highlighted him in our, uh, our pregame show saying he was going to be the guy that was going to have to pick it up and try to match Sherfield bucket for bucket. He certainly did in that first half. He did a wonderful job uh, knocking down shots from all over the floor, driving the ball to the basket, getting his bigs involved. Uh, he was fantastic. I love this one right here because it's just a simple little play. I mean, they run this one at the grade school level. You throw it off the top, then you run off those two bigs, and you get yourself a little three-point shot from the corner. And that one right there, that's just taking your time, probing down, waiting for your big man to get set, and then coming off of that screen and knocking it down. First half stats brought to you by Commonwealth Insurance, the way insurance should be. And we touched on some of those, a 13-2 margin, points off of turnovers. As uh, points in the paint, you touched on that as well. Kate talked to Rice Drew coming off the court about defending that three. They've got six here in the opening half. You're going to get out there on those shooters and run them off that three-point line. He said, you could beat us inside, but you're not going to beat us from behind the arc. All right, Kate, we'll be back with more here from GC Arena in Phoenix with the Wolf back up by one over the Lopes. Joel 
Joel Embiid is unhappy. Like, really unhappy. Because the internet keeps using not-so-amazing gifts to react to his amazing highlights. Mountain Dew presents the Joel Embiid Deserves Better Reactions gift collection. Now I'm so happy. <sighs> we made USAA insurance for members like Kate. A former Army medic made of the flexibility to handle whatever Monday has in store and tackle four things at once. So when her car got hit, she didn't worry. She simply filed a claim on her USAA app and said, I've got this. USAA insurance has made the way Kate needs it. Easy. She can even pick her payment plan, so it's easy on her budget and her life. USAA. What you're made of, we're made for. USAA. The temperature scanning kiosk from Pacific Office Automation is an easy-to-use, attendant-free device that quickly checks a person's temperature anytime, anywhere. You can now provide peace of mind at schools and universities, grocery stores, restaurants, nursing homes, medical clinics, sporting events, offices, private gatherings, and more. Look to us to help you reduce the risk and be safe. Visit PacificOffice.com. Pacific Office Automation. Problem solved. Welcome back to the Lopes Captain Show. Right now it's a one-point game. We're just moments away from the second half action kicking off. And we want to remind you that even though you can't be at the game, you can still follow along with the GCO, GCU Lope Nation app. The Lope Nation app is a one-shop stop for all things GCU athletics. You'll get the latest news, schedules, roster stats, scores, content, and more. And you can follow along the game for trivia, like tonight. And if you get the trivia right, one lucky fan is going home with this fan pack right here. Complete with a water bottle, sheer, like some pom-poms, a GCU hat and also a State 48 GCU shirt. So a lot of exciting things. We want to remind you fans at home, you are still part of the action. Of course, it is a limited crowd in here because of COVID safety, but you can still watch the game with other Lopes fans coming up on Sunday when the team faces off against ASU. There will be a viewing party and it's complete with a round of golf as well. You can enjoy golf in the morning and then take in that Sun Devil Lopes game on a large screen at the Lope House patio just off the 18th hole. That's this Sunday from 1.30 to 4.30 p.m. Make sure you get all the information on that so you can be a part of the team still even if you're at home on your couch. All right, we'll be back with second half action right after this. Get that app loaded during this quick break. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. How can you describe Whataburger's honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich? The chicken just has a certain, um, you know, with the sauce. The sauce, it gives you a little bit of... And the cheese, it's the exact right amount of... Whew, it's almost too hard to put into words. Good thing there's... Yeah. Good thing there's the honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich at Whataburger. Wolf back over the lopes by one at the half. Barry Beachell, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth here from Phoenix, Arizona. Oscar Freyer opening half. How about that? Uh, hitting the buckets. 
Also uh, a key block. Yeah, I like that one to start the game. That three-pointer then uses the big man real well. Comes off of that wide body screen by Midgard. I love this one here after getting beat defensively. Comes over and swats that one in the first row. They got seven points and doing a nice job. Three of five from the field and one big block and doing some, a solid job defensively as well. Move to pass Josh Braun for that career mark. The top GCU's D1 record books. If you look at the leading scorers in the opening half. Blackshirt Jr. stepping it up. Sherfield held to 11. Leads the Wolfpack, averaging 16.4 points per game. Junior Lopes, club member, no doubt. Join a tasty graham cracker. Was that a, oh, I thought that was a graham cracker. I thought yeah. it was a chocolate chip cookie. If it was a chocolate chip cookie, I might have got snatched it out yeah. of her hand. I'm so hungry right now. That'd be terrible. I don't, I don't do the graham crackers anymore, though. Gonzo's here, Tom Chambers. Bella Simon, the soccer coach, they're all. If you're a cutout, this is the place to be. I got cutout envy. I'm not talking about the cutouts anymore this season until I get my own cutout. Gotta let that go. We're underway, second half. Sherfield dishes out. Trey Coleman off the mark. Well, they, they start bombing away. 12 three pointer shots attempts in that first half, made six of them. They come right out and start the second half with a three. Stopping and popping his black shirt and regain the lead for GCU by he, one. He likes those elbow jumpers uh, coming off of big screens in transition. Meeks got a little bit of room and underneath it. Sprayer put a stop to that, right? Smothered chicken. I think you, give, you, you can give a third of a block to Frere, Midgard, and. Um, Laver down there on that one. I think they all got a, a little bit of wrist, a finger, something on it. Well, I guess Laver didn't. So split it between Midgard and, and Oscar Frere there. Give him half a block each. Can you do that? I don't know if you can do that. Yeah, why not? Off the mark. Rebound by Mikey Dixon up for Blackshirt. Stopping, popping, off the mark. Rebound pulled down by the Wolfpack. Midgard has to pull himself up off the floor. Sherfield in the corner. He out of bounds. Here, stepped out. The old Stackhouse play. Step on a, out of bounds, light out of, out of the corner. Oh, I'm all for right now. I'm not real happy with my team's come out of the locker room. They've missed a couple outside shots and then just kind of a silly mistake stepping out of bounds. Dixon to Midgard. Labor. Leaves it for Blackshirt. Direct Freyer down low. Now he comes back out beyond the arc. The wing. Bounce pass into Labor. Labor working his way past Meeks. Tight traffic there. Too tight. Midgard couldn't get it. Cambridge Jr. Bounce pass. Meeks, he lost the handle. Foul. Dixon called. Yeah, reached in there, trying to poke that basketball away. Got some ball, got a little hand and wrist as well. But this is something that, going back to the other end, what Laver and Midgard were able to do so well in the first three games is be able to pass, you know, big to big in the interior spacing. Well, you got a little faster, a little bigger, a little longer reach on some of these guys here from Nevada than you saw in your first three opponents. And they've done a good job of shutting down some of that big to big passing that the Lopes have been able to enjoy in the first three basketball games. We're not a back up at 45 again. Tight game here. The sophomore from Prairie Village, Kansas. Zane Meeks at the line. Connects on both. Blackshirt, Labor, looked right, now left. Freyer down to Blackshirt, looks inside. Gets it to Midgard. Midgard trying to muscle his way in. Foul. That's a nice play by Midgard. I mean, he's going against a longer player than he's faced all season low. Gets great position. Good entry pass. Gets that good left shoulder turn that he that he loves so much to try to get back to his right hand. As soon as he adds a little movement with that inside and be able to come back with the left hand hook off glass he's going to be unstoppable against smaller opponents now why wouldn't they keep feeding that why i mean he's got a seven footer guarding him but he's got about 60 to 65 pounds on the guy yeah given that a lot of kilos is um the uh, 
Wolfpack defender down there. I, I like that little five, that little punch five down there. Just get him down there, isolate, and let him go to work. And they certainly saw that they had to double team him. Yep. He's so good at passing out of those double teams to shooters. I, I would go right back to that the next time or two down the floor. Back and forth it goes. Lopes up by one now. Early on, second half. Meeks puts it on the floor into the paint. Kick back out. Coleman, Coleman into the paint. Mitgar got a hand on it. You shall not pass. Lecture stops Frank. Up over the top to Mitgard. Here we go. Muscling his way, big right hand, doesn't drop this time. They got him off his rhythm a little bit. He took one little extra moment to think about what he wanted to do. It wasn't his natural cadence to his, his bounce to his game. Washington for three. That's way off the mark. Yeah, I don't think Coach Alfred's oh, going to be too happy with that one. That's like the, the Tim said, Midcard has shot yeah, a couple that was early in the season. Three. Yeah, that, that was a silly find in Chicago when I was with the Bulls if we tried something like that. Dixon, baseline. Swarm down, cut off by Meeks. Back to Blackshear, 10 on the shot clock. Tied there by Cambridge Jr. Meeks comes out, Dixon, top of the key, a little floater, good! Who put a harm? Yeah! Well, I like that one by Dixon. He's the kid's been struggling a little bit, he hasn't really been able to get it going, and he gets this ball. At first, I thought he was going to shoot the three, then he puts it right on the floor, goes back Sherfield, <laughs> and uh, gets into the body of the big guy. And look at this one here by Mitgard. Comes off of his man, times it up nicely, stays away from the body of Coleman, and is able to block that shot. That wasn't even close. Yeah, he shot that about 14 feet. And the basket stands 15, 15 feet away. Sherfield sure makes. He's oh, pushing off yeah. down there. Nice job coming over and helping out there was um, Blackshear Jr. sliding those hush puppies down along that baseline. Takes that little off arm by Meeks. I don't know why they keep closing out. Meeks hasn't shot a three tonight, to my knowledge. And they're closing out on him like he's Larry Bird. Close out a little slower and make sure that he doesn't put the ball on the floor and get by you. It seems like he's really good at putting the ball on the floor and then making something happen. Came in leading the team with nine threes. Okay, well, like I said, maybe they know something I don't know, but look at Lawson on the layup. Yeah, He's maybe, so yeah. good on that left foot. They got Midgard that can operate on the right block, and Labor can operate on the on the left block, and he just goes a left shoulder turn with his back to the baseline through a right hand hook in. Quick turnaround, Cambridge Jr. That's off the mark. Loose ball pulled down by Washington. Washington looking to move on Midgard, and he does. That's the move I was just saying. Midgard needs that little right shoulder turn, left hand look. Washington does a nice job of working the offensive glass on the weak side and getting a bucket for his team. GC Lopes lead, trim to three. Labor turns to the bucket on Meeks. Backs in, goes baseline, pulls it back down, kicks back out. Dixon looking to drive, lost the handle on it, got it to Blackshear. Nine, eight on the shot clock, into the paint. A little sloppy, oh, it might have been pretty if it went. Turfield, a little sloppy on that possession, kicks it way out. Cambridge Jr., big bucket, momentum switch. Tied at 51. Yeah, Blackshear Jr. gets knocked to the floor, so now they're sitting scrambling, trying to rotate out to the perimeter, guys. You can't expect the seven-footers to get all the way out to 22 feet along that baseline and transition and find a shooter. Cambridge Jr. had all day to tee that one up. A couple of Wolfpack players at the scorer's table ready to check in. Midgard. Lecture. 10 on the shot clock. Freyer, watch three. Give it to him! Wow, they are just raining threes up, and both these teams shooting it well from behind the arc. Cambridge knocks one down from the left side, so Freyer comes down and says, watch me knock one down from the left side. Meeks. Wow. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. It's because the guy's made nine threes coming into the game. He's having, you know, uh, having... Averaging a, a high percentage doesn't mean he's ready to make one tonight. But you lay off him just a little bit until he proves he can make one out there. I'm not saying no close out on him, but don't close out on him where he can blow by you. Oh, wow, oh, pass. Wow, that was interesting. Sherfield. 
Back out driving. Coleman. Coleman out to Meeks. Puts it down on the floor. Careful. Sherfield long distance. Good. And, and that's just because Meeks is able to get by labor just enough to he, Frere thinks he's got to come off and help. And if he's able to just stay, keep Meeks in front of him, then, then Frere's got a, 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 a better beat on Sherfield to be able to, be able to close out and get a hand up on him. Travel on mid-guard. Freyer hits a big three. We're knotted at 54. 14-12, timeout on the floor to go second half. The 20th anniversary of Operation Santa Claus. We've been feeding families and making kids happy for 20 years. 2020 has been tough for everyone. More kids, more families need your help this year. In celebration of 20 years, please donate $20 or bring donations to Sanderson Ford, Sanderson Lincoln, or the UPS store nearest you. And you might just win a new F-150 truck or a Lincoln Corsair. Donations benefit local charities only. For more info, go to givetothecause.com. Once you've been to hell and back, there's not much left to fear. When the boogeyman goes to sleep at night, he checks under his bed for me. Have you ever wondered who Waldo's hiding from? Me. Not even the cougars of L.A. are enough to scare me. But if I get into an accident, I'm calling the boss. Sweet James. If you've been hurt, don't back down. Call Sweet James. GCU basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play at a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By Herf Jones, by your side. By Community Tire Pros, serving Arizona since 1945. And by Talking Stick Resort, play in style. Beautiful night here in Phoenix, Arizona. We're tied at 54 between the Lopes and the Wolf Pack. Lopes club members following COVID protocol, uh, the watch party at Canyon 49, as you see everybody's masked up there, masked up. Masked up, lope stuff. Look at that all lope up. Yeah, and the lope logo or symbol there. And do not forget, Sunday, little round of golf at the GCU Championship Golf Course. How about that in the morning? You make your way over to the Lope House, 80 foot, uh, 80, uh, 80 inch, let's see. Uh, TV, you watch the GC Lopes take on Arizona State out on the patio. I like it. Enjoy a socially nice distance, meal. of course. Exactly. Masked, masked up. Yeah. Outside, it's also a benefit. Long distance, turn around off the mark, loose ball. Wolf back. Uh, Lopes got to come up with that ball. 54 54, an outside shot. One of those guys in a white shirt's got to get that basketball. But that was a nice play by Coach Alford coming off of the two down screens there. They got the guy they wanted shooting it right from the top of the key. I'll tell you what, these coaches are drawing up some plays coming out of these timeouts, and their teams are executing them nicely. What do we got? Away from the ball. Just a second team foul in GCU here. We've, they did a nice job. They, they pretty much stayed out of foul trouble until two seconds to go and put the Wolfpack in the, in the, pit of the bonus situation, but the Lopes are doing a nice job not committing fouls. Milling. Three seconds in there. Oh. Wow. Short shot clock to work with. Camping out. 6 5. Sherfield's got to drive. Sherfield doesn't get the roll. Nice job by McLaughlin coming over. I don't know if he got a piece of that shot, but he certainly challenged it enough to make it miss. Labor in the game. Midgard out. McLaughlin in. Jaden Stone, that ankle apparently okay. He's in. Yeah, I saw Miller run up at halftime. He's moving good out there. Down to McLaughlin. Looks to move and muscle his way in. Now that's just some hard work down there. Give him an extra peanut butter and jelly sandwich post game for that one because he actually got that basketball and says, I'm not going to throw up anything soft going away from the basket. Here's McLaughlin here on the defensive end. How often do you see a good defensive play lead to a nice offensive play on the other end? Look at this. Just banging, banging hard with that left shoulder and then uses the glass to soften that contact that he's absorbing, finds the, the bucket, knocks down the free throw. 
The old-fashioned three-point play, Barry. We've seen all these old guys shooting them from behind the arc. Finally, we see some big guys going inside, doing some damage on a three-point play the old-fashioned way. Another stoppage in play here. I'm not sure what's going on now. Is it getting chippy out there? Officials getting together. They brought Alford over, Coach Drew over, talking to everybody. Oh, they're saying that they were, weren't sure who that last foul was called on. So the officials got together to make sure the uh, statisticians had it correctly over there. Sherfield kick back out. Robinson leaves for Sherfield, looking to move on McLaughlin. He played him tight. Oh, made him pick up his oh, look at that! Picked it off. All that hard work by McLaughlin. He got out on a 6-2 player and made him pick up his dribble on the perimeter. Uh, not a player, a very good player. Stone to labor, open for three. But bam! Oh, GC Lowe with three three-point, two three-point plays back to back, pushed their lead to six. Coach Alford wants a T.O. and gets one. Six points is the margin for the lead for GCU. Well, I tell you what, those last two buckets by the Lope were absolutely huge. McLaughlin wearing a big smile. He's been doing some hard work out there with the three-point play and the near block shot. Great defensive effort. And then look at this one here. That Jaden Stone gives the big man a nice pass right where he can get it, right in the shooting pocket. I think I called it a basket earlier, but right in the shooting pocket. And this is great because it's on rhythm. I can get that one right there, go right into my shooting motion. I'm on balance. I'm on my timing is great. Gives him a good high five. Like, thank you very much, partner. We needed that one. I needed that one. Let's go. How about Freyer earlier with our sweet play of the half? Brought to you by Sweet James. Hitting that sweet three-pointer. That's a, that's a good look at it right there. Is, Talked about the low. That was when the low for a bit of a low there offense, and they've gotten off to a fast start. That was for her second three of the half. And the, and the team really needed it. And Black Jr. Jr., he's doing a nice game tonight. He's really he scored the ball well in that first half. He's 12. He's got one in the first at the half. He's got one more here. Uh, bucket from the, in, the, in the second half. But his assist numbers. And I don't know if he's getting credit for all the assists that he's, he's dishing out there. They only have him for two assists, but. A lot of times, Barry, it's that hockey assist. I don't know if you know about the hockey assist part. Excuse but me? <laughs> I love teasing you with that one all those years in the NHL. Uh, just moving the basketball from one player to the next so they can move it on to find the open guy is huge yep. uh, in the game like basketball, and it doesn't get enough credit that it deserves. You know, I, I, I wish that they would keep that stat in basketball because, like hockey, I think it's important. That's well, where the uh, where the play and the bucket originates from, right? Really? I mean, when they transition and, and getting it up and on the court into the into the bucket, right? I'm, I'm just reiterating what you're saying, though. Yeah. But, oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> I, just, thought you, I thought you were giving me a hockey term that I was a little, oh, I, was, dude. I was glazed over that. I wasn't sure <laughs> what you were talking about. Boy, shooting in the second half, Nevada 3 of 12, and the low 6 of 11. This is the biggest lead for GCU. I don't think, you know, in all the years that we've been doing this, I don't think I got that expression that was ever. the first time. I didn't Obviously, know what you were talking I'm about. I'm just trying to form a sentence, and that's becoming difficult. Uh, Lost the handle there. Yeah, but don't sleep on this Nevada Ooh. team. They're good. They're a good team at playing from behind on the road. They were behind 10 at Nebraska uh, in the second half. And they were able to whittle that thing down where they had the ball in their hands in the final play. And Sherfield delivered a big three to clip the Cornhuskers at home. So they're used to playing from behind. So don't think that they're going to get rattled just because they're down six points. Coach Alford got a lot of confidence, and he instills in his team playing on the road. Another question again. Is it about the foul? Or? KJ Hines, I don't know if he, if Alford's asking the officials basically to give KJ a few more minutes because he's really uh, walking gingerly there, kind of going back and forth on that ankle. Take a look at Hines. I don't know if he got stepped on or oh, got caught there on uh, Gabe. That's that's the worst one right there when the toe catches. Uh, see, I think that's what, what Stone did never bothered me when you were foot kind of rolls to the outside of the shoe. That never bothered me. That's when your toe is up and your ankle twist. That's that high ankle sprain that's a little more serious than, than what we saw out of Jade Stone in the first half. 
All right, we'll step aside with 12.29 to go with the Lopes up by six. It's time to get away. It's time to escape. It's a new day to play. Your retreat awaits at Talking Stick Resort. Indulge your appetite for excitement with our thrilling table games, our electrifying slots, our outstanding restaurants, and our exceptional accommodations. It's all waiting for you. It's a new day to play at Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. Hold at the PV Mall and the Scottsdale Fashion Square. We dropped a few coins at the, at the old Build a Bear down there with our kids when they were young, going in there. And, oh, yeah. And, Scottsdale uh, Fashion Square. Yeah. Us. yeah. And, and, and us by let, name. Letting, them, <laughs> letting them build some stuffed animals for sure. I, I believe it's more than just bears, though, isn't it? I thought they had more than just bears. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, it seems like it's just. Well, they got more bears, yeah, like all sorts of like Christmas reindeer. They yeah. Got yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. You. yeah. Yeah, Star Wars, Minions, different games, uh, different movie characters. And then you can dress the bears. You can put them in any type of costume. Oh, I wasn't Springer for all that. Is yeah, you got to put a heart inside. <laughs> yeah, make you a make wish. a wish. Yeah. Making a wish for the families that are getting up. this. Yeah, no, we just took the Baker's basic package. I wasn't Springer for all wow. that stuff. Wow, it's so generous. It's Look, the holiday season. They got Scott. Star Wars, Scott. You probably would want to grab one. I am Baby a Star Yoda. Wars nerd. I'm not a fan of the Baby Yoda. The, 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 the Vada came out in a 1-3 oh, zone, then it really threw off the Lopes, and then they get a bucket the other way in transition. Lopes did not know how to attack that last defensive set by the Wolf Pack. It really showed they got a poor shot, and then they didn't get back in transition. We've seen that a number of times, just the bigs beating everybody down the floor, getting that good low post position. They're going back to the line again. So a six-point lead now. They're going to be trimmed a little bit further down. Like from the free throw line. Waver has three. Is that Washington? Yeah, well, Washington's not got seven points, and he's just doing a good job. He's got four, four rebounds, and he's done a nice job really establishing a presence on both ends of the floor around the baskets. They come out in a little 1-3-1 one, one, half court trap here, trying to cut off one side of the floor and make the Lopes play the play on one side of the floor. Oh, attack the middle. Pick back out in the corner. Jaden Stone for three. Off the mark. This ball picked up by Kane Millie. And Nevada may stay in that zone until GC you can see the show that they can get a bucket out of against it. Millie with a nice drive with the left hand. Wow, three straight times down the floor they score four points on the line and then the, a layup that's not what you want to see when you got a team struggling the way they were you got to keep making a bomb away from the outside keep them off the free throw line coach Bryce Drew wants to get a timeout Freyer and Midgard are going to check back in looks like Mikey Dixon too as the six-point lead evaporates look at this one more time here this is that drag screen that's something the Lopes do so well Labor just not able to stay uh, with Milling he turns the corner, gets all the way to the bucket, and an easy lay-in off the glass. So you, you, when Laver's 
sees that screen that's going to come, he's got to get up tighter to his guy. Really face force Milling to go either straight to the sideline or have to veer back out before he gets around him. That allows Dixon chance to get back in front or whoever was, was guarding Milling on that possession to get back in front to play solid defense. But he just attacked Laver too easily and got to the basket. We've got a great game here at GCU Arena between the 4 and 1 Wolfpack and the 3 and 0 GCU Lopes. Knotted at 60 with 11:24 to go. Dima Zador will also be on the floor. Labor takes a break. Yeah, they got to get somebody out there that can guard all the perimeters in some of those pick and roll situations a little bit better than Dima Zador with a I guess more foot speed, maybe have a better opportunity to stay in front of some of those guys on those drag screens. Prayer into mid guard. Left hand doesn't go. Pulled down by Husinovic. Cambridge Jr. Cambridge Jr. just threw that one right off of Frere's foot, foot and yeah. rolled out of bounds. We're going to dogfight here. 60 to yeah. 60 was a one point game at the half, and with just under 11 minutes to go, it looks like this one's going to come down to the the final ticks on the clock. It feels that way. Buckle up, Lopes fans. Lopes trying to keep their undefeated season. It's being tested right now by this Wolfpack team. They're coming here hungry. Robinson. Cambridge Jr. Yusinovich. Puts it up. Cambridge Jr. off the mark. Midgard pulls it down. Oh, he walked. He had somebody underneath them, and I think he was afraid to step on somebody and took an extra step with that uh, foot before he put, put, didn't want to put the ball down in traffic. I love the fact he goes out of space, out of his own space, and gets this ball. But see, just that little, that little bunny hop there, officials right on top of it. Eh, one of those ones you kind of go, eh, maybe I call it, maybe I don't. But in a tight game, they do want to make sure that they get every call right. I don't blame them. Yusinovich. Backing in Washington. Goes right hand and up and over Midgard. Well, you know, when you give up 70 pounds, you got to do something to loosen up that, that bulk against you. So just that little bounce to the middle gets Midgard just a little out of position. He's not as able to get back in front, and then he's able to knock it in. Dixon. No, that's going to be that's Jr. Jr. Going in there amongst the trees, getting that body oh, contact. Oh, 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 so that's the Lopes give up an 8 0 run. To the Wolfpack, now you can kind of you kind of feel Blackshear going. I got to do something to get us going again here. And he goes inside, gets that contact, and gets himself to the line. So nice recognition by just the sophomore here, and as early in his second season, realized my team is suddenly struggling. I got to do something to get some momentum back on our side. That was a great timeout by Alfred. Went down 60-54, he calls that timeout. Yep. His team goes on an 8-0 run. I mean, the crowd was getting into it. The they lopes, were. the body language it gave after that three-point play and the three-point shot yep. by Laver. And all of a sudden, Alfred calls that timeout and just shut down all that moment. 610 career victories for Steve Alford in his 30th year as a head coach. Bring it in from the baseline. Is there another basketball out there? What's going on? <laughs> Keep those uh, two balls on the court at one period of time. Well, put a clean one out there. What that was all about. Is that because of pro uh, safety protocols? Yep. From the corner off the mark, Freyer with the rebound for Blackshear quickly. Dixon. Dixon drives off the glass. <laughs> nice job in their transition. Offense right there got the ball up the floor over half court without it without having to put the ball on the floor once and then Dixon just attacked that hoop it's Dixon got tonight. He's had a solid game in yep. four points two or three for the field Washington Got some luck against Midgard Midgard put it into it. Oh, he stepped oh, on the step line out well, they, they, they're, they're, they're hating on Midgard's feet tonight those size 19s are, are catching a break he does a great job walling up and then look at this one right here one dribble boom over half court one, two more dribbles, and then it's in the basket. So great job of transition basket that time. I love this one here. Get into the get into the shot blocker's body, get that contact, and then 
Get a little crafty with the basketball and put it up off the glass. This game's been tied 10 times. We've had 10 lead changes. Lopes up by one. This is awesome. We get paid for this. This is the kind of game I love to do. You know, going ahead against uh, Mississippi Valley State where they won by was it 38 points or 42 points. It's nice that everybody gets to play, but this was this one right here would make your palms sweat. I love it. Sherfield. Washington. Washington. Robinson back to Sherfield. Sherfield steps back. Goes left. Quick shot. Cambridge Jr. In and out. Knocked out. The official. Said got Washington a got a hand on it. Yeah. Or did he foul? I think he got a in. push. Yeah, a push on Washington that time underneath. Ca caused Labor to lose his balance, and then between he and Blackshear Jr., they fumbled it out of bounds. I, I originally thought that they might just give that ball back to the Wolfpack, but the officials whistled the foul. Dixon, Mitchell. Over the top to the other big man, Labor. Labor, twisting, turning, big right hand. Draws the foul, looks like on Robinson. Yeah, that ball stayed on the rim a good, but felt like three seconds before it decided to squirt off the right side. But nice job by Labor. Realizing again, team struggling to score. They got the ball down there eight feet from the basket. I got to do something positive with it here. And doesn't always have to be scoring the ball, but like Blackshear Jr., he finds a way to get himself to the line. Now, unlike Blackshear Jr., he got to find a way to make both these free throws. <laughs> uh, I hate to do it. I don't want to jinx anybody. There you see it. He went ahead of Doug Baker. Oh, he got it. Into fifth. Down goes Baker, huh? All right, just one spot. He's going to knock a couple people off that list before the season's over, I feel. I would think so. Robbie Robinson takes a seat for the Wolfpack with four personal fouls. Himes back in. Sherfield drives. Not there. Loose ball. Frayer. Quickly. Blackshear. Dixon far side. Oh, stumbled a bit. Right set game out on. Crossover. Back out. Blackshear. Motioning. Comes back out. Hits Midgard. Midgard. Dixon. Again with the crossover, underneath on the glass with a re beautiful reverse. Wow, that was reminds me of the old Dr. J play when you take it from one side of the floor up under against the challenging defender and then score the ball on the other side of the basket. You didn't have the height that Dr. J has, but look at this one one more time. Like, okay, you want me to go middle? Okay, I'll take a baseline. Just goes by three guys. Even had some contact right there. It doesn't get called on the forearm and still got it in. Off the glass. <laughs> McLaughlin loves it. Look at that butter roll, baby. <laughs> Caught Freyer. Picked up his third. Something to keep an eye on. On the floor. Look at Midgard. Gets the ball back for his teammates. Get the jump ball. Arrow possession point to his GCU. And that's what I talk about. First to the floor. A lot of guys will reach for that ball, especially big guys. I don't like to go down there too, too often on the, on the floor. But Midgar goes down there and dies for the ball and gets those two big mitts on it and gets the tie-up. So after a 8-0 run by the Wolfpack, Lopes come back and on a 7-0 run of their own. A chance to extend that. Lopes had a six-point lead. Couldn't, it op couldn't open it up before the Wolfpack came back. To tie it up. Under eight to go. Midgard up over the top. Labor. Labor on Meeks with a right hand and in. Uh, Meeks just gave up too many kilos down low. And Labor just put that left shoulder, right hand jump hook right over the top of him. Seven point lead, the largest of the game for GCU. Seven point lead for GCU. 7.42 to go, back and forth. This is a up-tempo big league basketball game. The Wolfpack coming in 4-1 and one on the season. They storm back. Great timeout, as you mentioned, by Coach Alford. They come back. They tie it at 60. And the uh, Lopes work in the bench. Support. Put Labor down for a little while, but he comes back into the game. 
moves up to number five on the all time scoring list. He did a real nice job when he came back in this basketball game. I think what they needed was some low post scoring, some high percentage shots, and Labor's kind of giving them that. He knocks down the three here, which I, I love because that ball went down the baseline first, and they had a clean, real clean look at it. This is the one right here. This is the one where he says, I shall not be denied. Put that big left shoulder into him and throws that right hand hook right up over the top of him. He's having a heck of, he's having one heck of a, a basketball game. He understands what it's it's a big difference to go out there and beat a Grambling State or a Mississippi Valley State or a bit of Dick team. You get a real live basketball team in here uh, that, you know, quite frankly had a real good season last year and at all they're gonna have another good season this year. This is the kind of competition that you want to compete against and play your best and get a victory. Not okay just hang with them for a, a half or three quarters of a ball game. You want to finish the deal and get that W. The Lopes out blocking the Wolfpack 5-zip. Yeah, Frere's got a couple in his basketball game just out of pure hustle. I love that one by Midgard because he avoids the body contact and again staying high and letting his teammate come out over and, and help him out. And then Frere, I think we got a couple guys that got credit for that one. Midgard with another one. And then Frere got, he has another one after that that we won't get a chance to show you. So very active defensively, maybe more active here in the second half than they were in that first half. So whatever Coach Drew and staff said to them at the half about playing better defense not good to giving up another 45 points in the half the message was received for every three-point shot the gcu makes copper state credit union will make a donation to the students inspiring student scholarship fund for more information please go to giving.gcu.edu shirtfield drives and McLaughlin, that's the second time this young man has stepped into a driving lane, planted those big Nikes down there in that painted area and taken a blow for his team. I like this kid. Lopes shooting 60% here in the second half, 37% for Nevada. He might be the heart and soul of this basketball team. I mean, not only what he does on the floor, both, in, uh, both ends of the floor, but even when he's on the bench, jumping up and supporting his teammates. Wide open shot. Sean Miller Moore. The front rim kicks out to Blackshire. Wolf's on a 9-0 run the last three minutes. And the Wolfpack haven't put a bucket in in over three. Blackshire to four. He's got to put it up. Good! That's a good basketball. Uh, I don't know what... Coach Drew said to them after they had that 8 0, they gave up that 8 0 run, but they have come out a different looking team right now. And this 12 0 run is very impressive. 10 point lead underneath. Himes not going to go. Pulled down by Blackshire. Goes left. Dixon open for three. Ba Bam, baby! Coach Alford needs a timeout. This is this place is rocking and rolling. The bench is loving it, and he gets a timeout. What a run! 15-0 run for the Lopes, blowing this thing up. A 13-point advantage. He did this one more time by Blackshire. Takes that screen with the shot clock about to expire. He loves it. He rolls some dice on that one. Bench loves it. The doors off the floor, and then look at this one here. Fight scrum. Blackshire jumps in there. He grabs a rebound, kicks it over to his buddy Dixon, who he loves to find on the wing. Gets on balance before he starts to shoot this time. Nothing but that. partner. We've talked about Blackshire stepping up against the next two opponents here tonight against Nevada and Arizona State. He now leads all scores with 18 points in the game. Yeah, he's doing a good job. We got Remy Martin coming in here on Sunday afternoon. So this is a good tune-up for him with Cambridge and Sherfield. Get him ready for that one. And Remy Martin come off a subpar game. Didn't even get in double figures. So you know he's going to be chomping at the bit to get a piece. You know he's at home watching this game too right now. So Black, Blackshear Jr. is showing him like, don't you think you're coming up in our house and we're just going to lie down for you, ASU? You better bring it. Pride of Shadow Mountain High School will be on the line with Jalen House taking on Javon Blackshirt Jr. Sunday afternoon, 2 p.m. tip. Oh, Sean Miller Moore a little from behind there, reaching in. Yeah, getting a close out on that three-point line. Uh, something to watch my North Carolina Tar Heels do so poorly the other day against Texas. you got to be able to close out, get to the shooter, but stay on balance. You don't get blown by and you're left at a disadvantage. K.J. Himes 
in the paint. Travel. Got away with one, slid that pivot foot. A good six to eight inches down there in that painted area. It was able to snap it back the other direction and come with that left shoulder turn with that right hand hook. Got it down. The wolf pack desperately needed a bucket that time down to floor. They're going back into that 1 3 1 zone defense again. Top of the key. McLaughlin drops. That's too easy. A big hole in the middle of that zone defense. Blackshear Jr. spotted it like an owl. Saw it right away in McLaughlin. We have not seen him shoot many jumpers. Granted, that was only about a 12-footer. Still had a nice soft touch on it and went in. 13-point lead, GCU. Five and a half to go. Himes. Coleman inside. Washington. Kick back out quickly. Sherfield. Cambridge Jr. for three. Mm. There's that hockey assist I'm talking about, that swing, swing right there. Got it down low, swinging up to the top, and then the next guy swings it over to the shooter. He canned it. Back-to-back -back buckets, cuts it to 10. Bow oh, it's a little too much heat on it. You nailed it. That was it. Too much heat, and he bounced it so close to him that the ball comes up really hot. Players aren't used to that ball coming up over their shoulders on a bounce pass. It was just tough for Dixon to catch up to it. And it, like you said, it had some speed to it, too. Sean Miller Moore, McLaughlin take a seat. Midgard in, Labor in, Freyer in, Dixon in, and Blackshear. The five started. I thought this game was going to be in the 60s. Boy, was I wrong. 77 67. We still got over five minutes to play. Washington turns. I by Midgard. Goes left. Coleman. Coleman comes back out. Top of the key. Drives into the paint. Dishes out to Hines. Hines is in the corner. Labors on him. Back out beyond the arc. Sherfield. Swarm. Back out. Hines. Open look for three. Well off the mark. Big rebound. Freyer. Now, Freyer does a nice job. He stunts at Hines that time and stays with the shooter. Dixon drives baseline. Careful. Tiptoe. Blackshirt. Inside all alone. Nothing to do there but draw the. The foul, yeah. in Washington. I don't know how they didn't see Labor, the best player for the Lopes in a white jersey, seven-footer standing underneath the basket. And credit Dixon that time. He could have went in there and forced another one of those crazy reverse shots, but he dribbles all the way along the back, the, the baseline, gets it back out to their best playmaker in Blackshirt Jr., who all of a sudden goes, hey, I got a guy wide open underneath the basket. I might as well get one of my best players, or the best player. Like, Dixon tiptoes his baseline. He's like, like, do something. No, no, no. Keep going. And then he just gives a nice pass to Blackshear right here, who turns around and says, now, oh, my guy's wide open underneath the basket. Let me get him the ball. Labor makes both free throws. Meeks in for Hines. 12-point lead. Four and a half to go. Doing a great job here in the second half. I mean, they are really playing some good team basketball on both ends of the floor. Swarming Sherfield kicked back out. Desmond Cambridge Jr. to Trey Coleman. Coleman, Sherfield all over the court. Cutting in. Midgard got a hand on it. Blackshirt Jr. for all he could was trying not, not to foul on that possession. He was realizing he, was, he got beat on the curl route that Sherfield was running. And, he tried to stay on the hip, hoping that one of his big guys might be able to come in and block that shot without committing a foul. Now, the Lopes want to stop fouling. Right, they're, they're at seven right now, so they're already uh, put Wolfpack on the line for the rest of the game with each foul that they commit. But when you got a lead, a double-digit lead, well, you want to make sure that clock keeps ticking. And anything you can do to keep that clock ticking, I mean, you don't want to give up a point-blank layup, but stop fouling the perimeter players Make them have to earn buckets. So Washington and Robinson, each with four personal fouls for the Wolfpack. And I like that lady. What for a little three-quarter trap back to a man-to-man -man this time? Blackshirt, Labor. Leaves for Dixon. Eight on the shot clock. Labor looked inside, not there for Midgard. Dixon is going to put up for three. Oh, off the front of the ring, got, gets his own rebound. Oh, money! Wow, that might be the play of the game right there, time and score right there, because Wolfpack did a great job forcing a long shot, but could not corral the rebound. Dixon knows he was, the shot was going to be short. He follows his shot to the basket, gets the rebound. I thought he was going to bring it back out and burn some more time off the game clock. 
Stopping and popping Desmond Cambridge Jr. Cambridge Jr. and Sherford will have him. one heck of a basketball game. That gives Cambridge 22 points on 7 of 14 shooters. Oh, and he's 6 of 12 from behind the arc. Don't this, we highlighted this guy in the starting lineups. I didn't want to see him go for 16 or 18 points tonight. He's got 22. The lead is 10 for GCU. Approaching three minutes to go. Labor out to Dixon for three. Short. Midgard tried to push it out. Wolfpack. Coleman. Blackshire got in the way of that. Midgard ended up with it. Yeah, they need to burn a little clock on this yeah. possession right here. You're up by 10. Defense is back. Go ahead and use a good chunk of that uh, shot clock and that game clock. Generally, an eight-point lead with under two minutes of play is a pretty good position to be in at any level of basketball. As long as you're making your free throws and you're not turning the ball over. Chewing it up. Blackshire, seven, six. Got to do something. Drives. Kicks over to Labor. Oh, he lost. Oh, Midgard lost it. Coleman. Shurfield for three. Not there. Meeks. What a rebound by Meeks. Big time rebound when your team needed one. Three attempt. That one picked off by Labor after the miss by Cambridge Jr. All right, up 10. Two minutes to play. See if the Lopes can hang on. Cambridge Jr. called. That's a silly foul by Cambridge. That's going to put the Lopes at the line for two free throws. That's the 10th foul on the Wolfpack. Mikey Dixon with the hustle and the bucket. When life seems uncertain, there's one credit union that provides both dollars and cents. Copper State Credit Union. With solutions that focus on our members, you can take advantage of competitive rates, free cash back checking, and local attentive service. Uplifting our community is a standard we live by. That's why thousands of your Arizona neighbors rely on us. Strengthening Arizona families through financial empowerment. That's Copper State Credit Union. From reimagining the way you work to reassessing what you need, you've changed the way you do business. And now, so have we. With no annual contracts and flexible internet and voice solutions, you'll have what you need to get back to business. Rethink, reconnect, reimagine. Switch to Cox Business today. GCU on top by 10 with two minutes to go over the Wolfpack from Nevada. Our next telecast Sunday afternoon. Kate will have the pregame show at 1.30. Tip time, 2 p.m. as the 23rd ranked Arizona State Sun Devils come to GCU Arena. Hope that you join us on Fox 10 Extra, Channel 45, Cable 9, ESPN 3, or the Loop Nation app. Sun Devils. We've been waiting a long time to do a game with the Sun Devils. I'm excited for that one on Sunday afternoon. Ton of energy on this bench as they look to close it out, Kate Longworth. Well, Barry, before the game, I know you talked with Coach Drew, and he said this is not a weekend for the weary, meaning his team is going to get battle-tested from the get-go with Nevada and then ASU. But you can tell the Lopes, they were up to the challenge. You can feel a different energy for this game down here. I'm, of course, socially distanced from the bench. But these players, they have bought in. The chemistry is possible down here. Yeah, I can see it as, as well from up here. Total team effort here tonight. Under two to go. Buckle up, everybody. Sherfield. Washington back to Sherfield in front of the Wolfpack bench. Looking to move on labor. Drives baseline. Kicks back out. Swarmed by a sea of white. Is Washington. Sherfield's being checked out, and Kane Milling comes in for him. Interesting move there, taking Sherfield out of the game. It is an interesting move. I, I don't know why you would do that on the, on the offensive side here. 
Did he get injured on that, on that last piece of <laughs> shit? No, just ran over. Labor. He, he went full out like Rodman used to do, <laughs> trying to get that ball before it went on the baseline. No way. Finds Cambridge Jr. trying to thread the needle. Oh, no. Oh. He called a foul there. That's the last thing you want to do. Rare. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to give up a driving layup. I don't want to be too hard on these young players out there. Uh, and you get, but you got a 12-point lead. And you know you've got a couple seven-footers behind you. That's one you might want to say, okay, you beat me on this one. I'm going to make sure you don't beat me the next time. Let's see if you can get past my, my 14 feet I got down on a patrol on that baseline for me. Four in mid-guard and labor. Excuse me. Four on Freyer right now. He had kind of a mental error breakdown right before the uh, end of the first half to committed in a foul. Yeah, with that, that one with two seconds to go coming back to haunt you. Now with a minute and 40, he was like, well, okay, don't worry about it being in fourth. You get five, you get, you get five, no doubt about it. You don't want to keep the guy from starting to play playing hard, but you want to make sure that next foul, if you have to commit one, is one that you're trying to stop somebody at the rim, not on the perimeter. Lead is 10. Labor. Oh, he walked. Goodness gracious, Oscar. Yeah, but Frere hits him. I mean, excuse me, Labor hits Frere with a bullet. And, and I think it was between steps, but he takes him like four, four little Fred Flintstone steps to stop right there. See, that was <laughs> just like the Barney Rubble or something. I don't know what that dance is called, but officials picked up on that right away. Ron Blackshire, one point away from a career high at 21 at Seattle U on February 20th. Off the glass and in. DeAndre Henry, mm. Phoenix native. Pack. I'm going to pack it in. The looks equal to the task here. I was a little surprised that the Wolfpack didn't foul a little sooner in that possession. You know, you're down by eight. It's not like you're down four. With a 30-second shot clock, you let too many ticks run off of that clock on that possession. It makes it real tough to come back on the other end, especially if Blackshear Jr. can knock down two free throws like he did the last time down the floor. Last time he was at the free throw line. Yeah, that was that career when mark. When we were coming in, and Dan Marley was hyping this kid up, and, and he had the four state championships. He's lived up to that hype, hasn't he? Yeah. I mean, uh, only player in, as, as a freshman to go for 30, 150, and, and 100 rebounds in a, in a season. And coming back out here, and he's doubled his assist numbers, and he's got his team on the verge of beating a very good Nevada team. Oscar Freyer picks it off on the move, off the glass. Oscar Freyer. That'll do it. That'll put it in, as a chick heard used to say, the eggs is cooling and the butter's getting hard. That was a nice win for the Lopes. Blackshear with a new career high in points. Picked up by Dixon. Yeah, I think the Nevada Wolfpack realized that that's it. Down 12, under a minute to go. They're staying back. They're not going to commit any fouls. They're not going to send the Lopes to the line anymore. Wonderful job by Coach Drew and his staff having his team ready to prepare, making the adjustments at halftime to get this victory. Nine on the shot clock. Blackshear hesitates, drives off the glass. Loose ball pulled down by the Wolfpack. Cambridge Jr. Makes reverse off the glass. That should do it. They get it across half court and dribble it out. 87-77. This is victory formation. Uh, the use of point of football term. And what a what a team victory. I mean, uh, indeed. Blackshear Jr. goes for 22. You got Labor with 19. You got four guys in double figures. The team launches 87 points against one of the better defensive teams in the country. Bryce Drew and Steve Alford greeting each other. Two standout college basketball stars from the state of Indiana going toe to toe here. With the Lopes victorious by 10 over the Wolfpack from Nevada. The teams and Alford will be joining the Lopes. Yeah, the coaching staff, that's the entire coaching staff for the Nevada Wolfpack. He sent the players to the locker room, which I can kind of get. You know, you don't really need a whole lot of guys getting too close to each other from the team, but this is nice that they. He invites the other coaching staff to come join them at half court for a prayer. Probably wishing them safe travels and happy holidays and, you know, something like that. I want to get a mic on those guys down there. I want to know what Coach Schilling and those cats are saying down there. How do we get a mic down there? He's going to fly a drone or something. It's kind of a 
It's an in. I want in. I don't I'm care. A, I don't right care. Right I want in. Uh, you got to stay off the floor. <laughs> got to stay off the floor. Ben Longworth is going to be uh, joined by Mikey Dixon. As the Lopes are victorious and grew, improved to 4-0 and o on the season. Let's send it down to Kate Longworth. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, like you said, Mikey Dixon tonight with 11 points, 5 boards. He's getting ready right now for this interview. A big win for TC tonight. Uh, 10 points in over Nevada. And Mikey, you guys had a 10-day layoff. You had a 10-day layoff, but you guys came out fast against Nevada. Everyone was talking about their speed, but you guys did not skip a beat from the get-go. What was the mindset against the Wolfpack? Um, you know, we just had to persevere. Uh, the whole time, Coach said it was going to be a game of runs, and he said it was going to come down to what team uh, didn't give up and just uh, uh, kept uh, uh, playing, uh, buying into what we wanted to do. And uh, it was a it was a good uh, battle test for us. I feel like uh, I feel like that's what we needed. We came together as a as a unit tonight. I feel like, and I, I think we took a big step. And for you personally, what's it been like this year to be with the team from the get-go after last year, obviously starting at conference play after transferring? How has it been for you to come in with the game plan from the from the start and to be under Coach Drew? Um, it's been good. Uh, you know, Coach Drew, he's an awesome coach. He's an awesome guy. And um, I think uh, we are just trying to buy in to what he's uh, 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 trying to instill in us. You know, and that's just playing hard, playing together. And you know, uh, uh, just being happy for everybody. You know, every every game is going to be somebody somebody's night. Um, but as long as we just play hard, I think we're going to be we're going to be fine. And we've just been trying to listen to him. Yeah, you capped off a 15-0 run in the second half with that three. What was fueling the team's uh, success down the stretch? Um, you know, we were just believing in each other, just playing hard. Um, for me, you know, I, I know I could shoot it. I just got to be confident. Um, and that was a good one to see go through. And um, it, was just, it was just a good team win. <laughs> All right, go celebrate. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank and uh, the team will celebrate tonight, but as we know, they will be ready to go Sunday, an afternoon matinee against Arizona State. But we'll come back here in just a few minutes here at GC Arena to wrap this one up. The final, the Lopes, 87-77 over the Nevada Wolfpack. I'm personal injury attorney James Bergener. Accidents can happen. If something happens to you or your family, call me. My firm and I will take you by the hand and guide you through everything. You see, personal injuries are just that. They're personal. You're not a number. You're more than just a name. This is your life. At my firm, each case is professionally and personally tailored to you. So if you've been injured, I've got your back. Call me now for a free consultation. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. The Lopes with a 10-point victory over the Wolfpack from Nevada to improve to 4-0 and on the season. Barry Butel, Scott Williams back with you at GCU Arena in a game that, uh, wow, was going back and forth. Numerous games that were that was tied. The runs. It was in the runs in the game, the lead changes. I mean, this was a, this was a great basketball game. It was fun to yeah, call, it fun to watch. Fun, you know, it was just good to be a fan. I mean, especially if you were a Lopes fan, but just if you were a basketball fan, it had a little bit of everything. That 8-0 run um, by the Alfred's Bunch after the Lopes had gone on a 6-0 run was a huge momentum swing. Yeah. But then... I think Coach Drew realized his team had lost it. He gets a timeout, and then that Lopes go on that 15-0 run and really busted the game open. Once they got the double figures, they smelled that blood in the water, and I think the Wolfpack were able to get it to 8 or 9 and 7 a couple times down the stretch, but never could get close enough to challenge as the, shot, as the game clock was starting to wind down. But what a game by Blackshear yeah. Jr. The kid really, really went to work. 37 minutes this kid logged tonight and had wonderful control over both halves of a GCU attack. 44 points in the first half, 43 points in the, in the second half. And he did a little bit of everything. He knocked down some shots. He had 12 points at the break. 
and he continued that type of effort that he had of not forcing anything. I thought every shot that he took tonight, he used his teammates to help get him open. This is what I love right here, okay? I go one way, come back off the screen the other way, and get to that spot on the floor that I like. Same thing once again, come off my big, get to the spot that I like on the floor. He loved that one there. That's when he rolled the back hands on him. Uh, but it's just really an infectious team spirit that he has, that he's got from Coach Drew, that has become infectious. Now the whole team has got it guys that are on the floor, guys that are on the bench, guys that were playing in the first three games that didn't get a chance to play tonight, they were still up and cheering. They had, that bench had a, a life of its own. A lot of energy. Our Copper State Credit Union player of the game is Javon Blackshear Jr., another guy that, boy, he stepped up tonight, got in a little bit of foul trouble with those three fouls, but he had 19 points in the game for Alessandro Labor. Yeah, moved up on that uh, all-time scoring column, the fifth uh, place as well, but another solid game by Labor. He had to go against some longer bodies, some more strength and size that he had seen in the previous games, and he handled it nicely. Yeah, he got in some foul trouble, but he didn't force anything. He took his outside shot when they collapsed on him and didn't respect him, but he, he did a nice job doing damage inside. That was a big one right there because that's that's when the Lopes were struggling to find the basket. He knew his team needed a bucket inside. And he just said, I know I got a defender on me, but I'm still going to find a way to squirt this ball in the basket. Well, you're seeing the depth on the bench, too. They're stepping up. Guys are coming in. The stone comes in, hits back-to-back -back buckets. One of them a three. Gabe McLaughlin comes in. Oh, he was Rebounding huge. the muscle underneath the bucket. The, also pouring in some points as well. Yeah, he, he, McLaughlin, he did it on both sides. But the, 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 the buckets were good. The block shots, taking the charges. He had two charges, I think, on, on guys driving to the basket as well. I love that one right there. As that was that was the start of a back-to-back -back three point plays for the Lopes uh, and he, he, he just really uses his length his energy he's infectious spirit coming off that bench and when you got a guy like that that you know that can produce it's going to be huge and we're going to play the keys of the game and we talked a little bit about how how pretty the Lopes offense has been against some of those lesser teams well they kept it going again tonight 58% from the floor uh, and then they didn't gamble so much on defense in the second half as they did the first half of uh, uh, Wolfpack were over 50% shooting in their first half and well under that uh, in the second half and it's beginning to look like a Drew uh, Bryce Drew team. Yeah, uh, I think uh, Dixon touched about it with Kate there at yeah, the end of that did, guys are prepared and guys are playing together Starting to come together as a team a big step up He said as a we revisit the Sanderson Ford keys to the game. Well, you know going into this game really didn't have a, a true feel for the team right three and oh no. You know, Grambling, Mississippi Valley State, Benedictine, you right. really didn't know if they could play with the big boys. Yeah, I can and here's five. a Nevada Wolf Pack team that comes in 4-1 and one on the season, and they win by 10. Yeah, I can find four guys off the street that could give those first three teams a run for their money, but this was a real quality opponent that they played in you know, the Mountain West Conference here. They got the Pac-12 coming in here on Sunday. Yep. So we're really going to know what we have <laughs> come some Sunday evening, what you got in this GCU team. And if they play the way they played tonight, Sun Devils are in trouble. Well, what are they going to what are they going to have to do? Obviously, the Sun Devils are going to come in red hot because they they uh, San Diego State took it to them on their home court. They're going to come in here three and two on the season. Bobby Early, you know, it's going to have a prepared team that doesn't want to come in here, obviously, and continue that slide. They're going to come in red hot in this game on Sunday afternoon. Well, it most most definitely will. Uh, and I, I think what the Lopes need to do is what they did here in this game today. They can fall behind a little bit in that basketball game. You still got the confidence in one another. You don't split, you don't flash, you don't start playing disjointed basketball. You stay together and you see it through for 40 minutes. All right, there you see it. Arizona State here Sunday afternoon, 2 p.m. tip. Kate Longworth will have the pregame show at 1.30. But that'll wrap things up from here at GCU Arena, where tonight the Lopes are victorious over the Wolfpack from Nevada, 87 to 77. As I mentioned, please join us again Sunday right here, 1.30. Kate will have the pregame show, tip at two against the ASU Sun Devils. But until then, for Kate Longworth, Scott Williams, and our entire crew, I'm Barry Butel, wishing you a wonderful evening.